in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Whenever you think God is irrelevant in your life, all he needs to do is to step, just one step away. Hallelujah. Lord, you are faithful. Hallelujah. The hand of God upon this ministry is a wonder. Let me tell you something. I cannot begin to describe his majesty and his grace. The hand of God and the things that he has done this year him praise. Some of you may not know why we take out time to thank him. Some of you may not know why you see some people kneeling down, others rolling. When you remember what the Lord has done for you and you are truly grateful, you will have cause to say, Lord, I give you thanks. There are many of us that take our breath for granted. There are many of us, we take too many things for granted. Hallelujah. The fact that what you are enjoying today is not being enjoyed by everybody is a reason for you to give God thanks. Hallelujah. I know people who stream from the hospitals with one leg. On one leg, the brace tied. And they are celebrating God the way you are doing. And they look at God in that situation and say, Lord, you've done things well. I know whole families that were wiped out in bomb blasts, plane crashes, yet you see the people rejoice. They say, if you will not praise me, I will raise up stones. Who will testify that I have been faithful? Lord, do not replace me with a stone. My mouth is still open. And I will tell you thanks. Hallelujah. See, let me tell you something, friends. Hold on, please. You know, people look for the secret of this, the secret of that. People want the secret of power, the secret of grace. Some of these little spiritual principles, they are so simple that many people trivialize them when there was need for bread it took two loaves and five fish am I correct and he lifted it up what did he do give thanks the principle of thanksgiving is the principle of multiplicity anything you thank God for multiplies in your life now, I know many of you have heard this, but for you, it's not yet a revelation. You say, wow, nice word. I'm telling you, anything you thank God for has the capacity to multiply in your life. It's often said, when you thank God for his finger, you will see his hand. When you give him thanks for his hand, you will see him. Hallelujah. But many of us are not grateful. Many of us are not grateful. We refuse to see what God is doing in our lives. You pass a road and you watch an accident there and just smile. And you fail to see that it would have been you. In one minute it would have been it. And let me tell you the world would have continued going. People would just cry for two weeks and that's all. I know God is faithful. The psalmist says, if the Lord has not been on our side, now may Israel say, we have piles of people inside and outside and we have not had one record of bone blast. One. One. That a car drove in here to blow people up. We have seen the faithfulness of God. 
Are you listening to me? In the midst of all of the crisis and everything that has happened, there has been a covering of the Most High. Not because we are better. There are many churches that were taking communion and were praying while bombs blew in their churches and killed prayer warriors. Hallelujah. This is a mystery that many of us do not know. Thanksgiving. That's why many mothers are blessed because they know how to give thanks. While they are washing the plates, they give thanks. When you see where you were by January and where God has brought you now, you will give him thanks. Hallelujah. Many of you came here with all kinds of complex, all kinds of inferiority, all kinds of oppression, demonic sicknesses, every kind of thing. But see what God has made out of your life. Who would have known? Some of you are leaders today. I choose to see your faithfulness, oh God. We watched a documentary last week, how God took us. This was the whole of Koinonia before, he and I. I mean, just about this crowd. But see what the hand of God has done. Go on our Facebook page and see the wonder-working power of the Spirit. Go across the campuses in this nation and families and see the awe-inspiring things that the Spirit of God is doing through our teachings. It's easy for you to sit down and laugh and say hands grew out, legs grew Try it. Just do it. It's easy for you to watch the way we do ministry stresslessly here. No burden on you to bring any, no cajoling you. Every time you come and everything is done in excellence. It's easy for you to see the favor of God and trivialize it. Many times you don't know the power of God's gift in you until you watch others who don't have what you have. I have seen pastors struggle in ministry as if God didn't send them. I have seen people cry. I have seen members languish and lament and weep and say, Lord, won't the word at least work for me? There's no week you have come that there's nobody to give testimony to the glory of God. Do you see these things or are you still blind? Lord, I choose to thank you. I started thanking him when I could not heal a single sick body. At least I thanked him that I could preach. No manifestations, no miracles, no nothing. But there was a harvest of salvation. And I said, Lord, I thank you because this is a sign I'm going for. And God said, you mean you are thanking me for this small? I said, Lord. I said, son, you have not seen anything yet. Then another dimension opens up. And I said, Lord, I return thanks. And God says, do you need to? I said, of course. I'm not stupid. I know that I must return thanks. The Bible says Jesus was passing and he saw ten lepers. And they beckoned on him to heal them. And he said, all right, get up, go and show yourselves to the priest. The Bible says, as they went, they just found out that they were healed. The Bible said Jesus was passing. But only one came back. And when he came back, he saw Jesus still waiting there. I thought the Bible said he was passing. What was he waiting for? And when that one came, he said, were they not ten of you? Where are the other nine? Some of you here are among the other nine. Lord, my parents have started giving me money, but it's just 30,000. When will they increase it? <laughs> Lord, I've gotten this job, but oh, it's just 50,000. How much can 50,000? Until you hear the testimony of someone who has waited for 10 years without a job, then you will know he is faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, when will my own husband come? It's only married men that are coming. 
Wait till you hear the ladies own who no man even ask out. Only ladies tell her, how are you? Learn to see what God is doing and respond in thanksgiving immediately. Don't organize and shift your thanksgiving. And say, no, no. This is not my message tonight. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. God bless you. Say after me, thank you, Jesus. Say one more time, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We began a series on the full gospel. How many of you were blessed two weeks ago? Powerful, powerful teaching. You will be blessed tonight again in Jesus' name. Now, in 10 minutes, before we get to the main teaching, I want to teach on the power of testimonies. The Lord asked me to do this in 10 minutes, very quickly. The power of testimonies. Hallelujah. This morning, while I prepared, I just sat down, just writing and going through my notes. And suddenly, a vision was opened before me. And I saw a release of angels. They were looking like horses, but they were also looking like human beings. And they were running with such speed. And then I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And I just had in my spirit, watch. And I kept looking. And then I noticed that they were holding something like vapor. You know how spiritual things are. All of them were holding things like vapor. And then one was holding something like a measuring tape. I mean they were running at supersonic speed. And the Lord told me that this vapor, or it looked like vapor. I had the scripture. If the cloud be full of rain. I said, Lord, what is this? Rain is this way, but I'm seeing angels holding vapor with that speed. And then I had a loud voice. I will hasten my word to perform it. And God told me that Koinonia is entering a dimension of the performance. The performance. The demonstration of the power of God's word. I don't tell you anything until God speaks to me. I'm not one of those people that stand on stage and talk jargons. I believe when I hear the voice of God, the performance. Katabukashia. Hallelujah. And I saw a vision. You know, I love saying things before they happen because there, are, there will be many doubting Thomases. But then when it happens, I saw on this stage, testimonies i saw a line of people reaching down there i said lord what is this and the lord told me there will be an eruption of testimonies that will make people fear to the point that many people will even start speculating that in our something is this is not normal i'm saying it write it you will see it testimonies and so I said Lord why has it not happened why now and the Lord told me something he said my people are not thankful this is why we took our time listen carefully the Lord told me he said you are grateful but you are not thankful hallelujah and then he asked me to share the power of testimonies this is why we took our time to give thanks psalm 22 verse 22 it's just a 10 minutes teaching quickly please psalm 22 verse 22 lord we believe your word every time you speak you have the ability to perform we believe your word psalm 22 verse 22 anybody there a loud reader No one is there. Ah! 
Can we have someone in front? Anybody as loud as you can? Thank you, sir. I will declare your name unto the brethren in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee he said I will declare your name to the brethren in the midst of the congregation will I praise you hallelujah a testimony is this is with respect to the church the Christian context Honoring the Lord. The act of honoring the Lord by bearing witness to others about his work in your own life. An act of honoring the Lord by bearing witness. About his works in your life. It's an evidence. It's proof. That God is at work. Hallelujah. He says, I will declare your name before the brethren, the family of faith. Hallelujah. He said, before God's congregation. Testimonies are very, very important in the life of the believer. Very, very, very important. Hallelujah. I'll give you four benefits of testimonies very quickly. Number one, testimony brings glory and honor to the name of the Lord. As seen in Psalm 22 verse 22. Honor and glory. Every time you stand on stage to testify of the things that God has done in your life, you bring honor. You bring glory. The congregation sitting will see and say, God is truly mighty. The Lord in the midst of his people. Mighty. Doing wonders. That the name of his son Jesus is being lifted. You bring honor and glory. And the Bible says, listen. If I be lifted up. He said, I will draw all men. And the way God is lifted up. Is that he lifts the vessel. That lifts him. Are you listening to me? John 17 verse 1. He said, Now the hour has come. Glorify now thy son, that thy son may bring glory to you. So the son is first glorified, and then the father is glorified in the son. Every time you give God glory, every time you testify, you create a platform to honor the Lord in the congregation of God's people. Number two. Testimonies prove that God can be trusted and that his word is true. This is so important. We live in a generation of skeptics. Amazing. It used to be scientists and philosophers alone. But right now, all kinds of people, including young people. How are we sure that Titan works? How are we sure that these miracles are real? How are we sure that these testimonies are not made up? How are we sure that somebody was not giving money to testify? How can armed robbers shoot somebody and the bullets are bouncing back? Don't do film trick for us on stage. Skeptics. When a living witness testifies. See, it's one thing for you to see someone on TV or hear about a testimony in an article. It's one thing for you to see someone that you know. Hallelujah. When God's servant, Pastor Jake's, was healed and God turned his genotype many people just knew that ah this is not joke again but if we had said it here some of you would just laugh and say all these men of God they think we are children they just stand on stage and speak nonsense testimonies prove that God can be trusted say after me God can be trusted Psalm 22 verse 24 same chapter 24. Anybody? He said, For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Of the afflicted. Neither had he hid his face from him. Neither had he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him. But when he cried unto him. He heard. He heard. So 
testimonies encourage the people to know that God, your God, because there are many kinds of gods. In River State, bottle of Fanta. Right, Bishop? Bottle of Fanta is a God to somebody. So when you say God, Jesus said to know you, the only one and true God. Testimonies prove that God can be trusted and that his word is true. Romans 10, 11. I have 10 minutes for this teaching. Romans 10, 11. You must get this. Romans 10, 11. Say it. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him, Whosoever believeth on him, Shall not be ashamed. Shall not be ashamed. Say, I believe in God. And I will not be ashamed. Say one more time, I believe in God. And I will not be ashamed. So testimonies prove that God's word is alive. Jeremiah 1 verse 12. He said, I am a lot. He said, Son of man, what seest thou? He said, An almond tree. Say, You have seen correctly. For I am alert and active, amplified, watching over my word to perform it. Number three, testimonies act as a seal to the miracle that has been received. This is very important. Look at me. Have you seen people get certain miracles and lose it? Have you, have you, have you heard about that? Have you, have you read books how to receive and maintain your miracle? I've seen a lot of people that receive miracles and lose it. You see, the purpose of miracle is not just a showmanship. It's to give God glory. Hallelujah. It means if God is not glorified in your miracle, it was wasted. Hallelujah. Luke 17 from verse 11 to 19. The Bible says, that was, that's a parable of the ten lepers. That one returned back and gave thanks. And what happened to him? The Bible says, Jesus told him to go, that he would be made whole. Look at me. Nine were healed. Only one was made whole. Let me tell you what that means. That the people, the leprosy left them, but the hands didn't grow back. So healing. The leprosy did not destroy them further. Alright? But that one person came back and all his fingers, all of it came wholeness so testimonies act as a seal every time you stand before god's people and say the car would have capsized but god kept me demons are standing from where they are standing and watching it's a seal because god's people have had it you have committed god's integrity further in your life god will not let you come and testify and go back with a disappointment are you listening to me you put pressure on God to preserve that testimony because you have declared in the congregation of his people. And God knows that by these two immutable things, he cannot lie. Are you listening to me? A testimony is not what will happen. A testimony is what has happened. He said, I will declare your works. Are you getting blessed? You see, many of you have robbed yourself of new dimensions because you have refused to see. And let be, there are many of you, if you would write the testimonies that God has given you this year, many people would have been born again as a result of your testimony. Many people would have been healed as a result of your testimony. Number four, the last reason. And this is very powerful very very powerful revelations 9 19 verse 10 revelations 19 verse 10 revelations 19 verse 10 and Please I listen. fell at his feet and I fell at his feet to worship him okay and he said unto me see thou do it not I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus worship god for the testimony of for jesus the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy. listen let me explain this mystery oh i pray god will open your eyes he said the testimony of jesus is what the spirit of prophecy 
This means every time you testify of Jesus, are you listening to me? You create an atmosphere for a duplication of that miracle in your life again and in the life of another person. It says testimonies about Jesus, they are prophetic in nature. That means they have the capability of replaying themselves in the future. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So when David stood before Goliath, don't think David was just laughing. He was a man like every other person. And he looked and he drew from the archives of his testimony. He said the one who delivered the lion, come on, the one who delivered the bear, he began to encourage himself with those. He was prophesying. He said the one who did it in the past. I, I want a replication of that testimony in the future now. The testimony of Jesus. This is why sometimes you hear us say the things that God did in the past because we expect him to reproduce it again. Hallelujah. The testimony of Jesus. There are many of you, the last time you received a certain testimony, that was the last time you had it. You did not maximize the testimony as a prophetic ladder to launch yourself to a new realm. Take seriously what I'm saying. It's very powerful. Many of you refuse to come and give testimony and say, I don't want to sound proud. But you see, whenever we say write prayer requests, you don't hide it, do you? You write all your prayer requests. Life partner. Job. I'm struggling with this habit. This and that. You are quick to write your requests. But you are slow. You say, should I testify? Should I not? And then you find out that for a very long time, there's no reproduction of testimony in your life again. They have, have you seen certain people again and again on stage? You are even tired of them. Every time you see them, you say, this brother again. You are laughing at him, but he is always coming back. Are you not seeing the principle? Notice, no, I, I'm, I'm being very honest here. Do you notice that there seems to be a repetition? You see a brother comes to give a testimony about the faithfulness of God in the family. Oh God, open up a door. God did this. And you laugh at him. And next week again, you see him. And you are laughing and mocking and you sit down there, you are angry and say, God, why won't you visit me? God said you did not honor me. The purpose of the testimony that I gave you was to encourage someone. Every time you are standing and you say, I had a lump and the lump disappeared. Somebody who just came for koinonia with a lump say, are you joking? You mean lumps can disappear? The testimony of Jesus. You are creating an atmosphere for that same miracle to be reproduced. And the person will say, I had this testimony. I'll never forget the testimony of Steve Strings. When it was time for, for um, admission, first list came out. His name was not there. This was his, the story he told me. Second list came out. His name was not there. Hallelujah. Then we went for service in Kwangila, Living Faith. And he had someone, someone testifying that he went around Senate seven times. And when the second list came out, he got his admission. What happened? Steve said, that is it, the spirit, the testimony of Jesus. Steve String said he went around Senate for this, waiting for the third list. And when the third list came out, his name was there. You see, when you testify, you don't just tell people what God has done. You tell them what you did that brought the result. So somebody will look and say, ah, so God is faithful. Hallelujah. A job opportunity came and two of you were there and maybe you sacrificed it for somebody else. Then a greater job came. Somebody will now learn a principle from it. Are, are you following me now? I will declare the name of the Lord before my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise you. Psalm 22 verse 22. Never forget this scripture. I choose to be thankful. When you are not thankful, you will keep getting angry at those who are testifying. and say, why are they boasting? Are they lying? God bless them. What do you want them to say? Keep quiet like you are doing and stop the Lord from being glorified. 
Someone comes and says, God, open a door for our family. God, wipe the tears of my mother. God, wipe the tears of my father. And people see, every time you see people testifying, don't just get angry and say they are bragging. You don't know where they were before the miracle came. Hallelujah. The Bible says rejoice with them that rejoice. When you hear a testimony, don't just look and say this person self. You are always talking. Why don't you celebrate and say, Lord, I rejoice with this person. The same God who did it for Sister A. The same God who did it for Sister B. The same God who did it for this family. At least I know this family when they used to go to the well to fetch water. Now they have their own house living in a bubble. I know this woman who was barren for eight years. Now see how with children. I rejoice. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So I want to encourage you because the Lord told me that many people are grateful but we are not thankful. That's why I decided to take these few minutes to teach you. Because you see, every time God rebukes a ministry is the leaders that are to be blamed. Hallelujah. If I don't teach you, there's no... God cannot blame you and hold you accountable. When he fell, who did God go to? Was he blind? Didn't he see Eve? Said, Adam, what happened? Adam said, the woman. Oh, may I not say the people? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say, Lord, I receive grace. I receive courage. I know that many of you, many of you are ashamed. You are just saying, I, I don't speak English very well. Who cares? Say it in house, huh? Or say it in your language and call an interpreter. Oh, yes. Who, who paid your transport to come here that will eye you? Who was there when you were crying? Speak whatever you can speak and give God thanks. See, don't put yourself under unreasonable, ridiculous pressure. We are excellent people, not stupid people. Are you listening to me? Don't come and say, see my shirt, this material that I bought, self. everybody knows. It has been lying down in Sabodia. There is me that came and carried it. Now I want to come and stand and disgrace myself. People worry about all kinds of useless things. And that's why they don't testify. My Wivon has been there for how many years? He has in my beard. He said, I will declare your name before the brethren. Hallelujah. We're going to pray before we go to the teaching tonight. Say, Lord, I receive grace. Grace. Go ahead and pray. Make sure you are praying. Kabbalah Kota Silamaya. Say, Lord, I repent for trivializing your works in my life. I repent for trivializing your works. I thought you would be arrogant if I testify. But right now, Lord, I know that I've been robbing myself and robbing other people of the opportunity for seeing new dimensions. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, I receive grace to be faithful. My testimony I now know it will bring you honor and glory. I now know that it will prove to men that you can be trusted and that your word is true. I now know that it will act as a seal to my miracle. I now know that it will create an atmosphere for that testimony to be duplicated in my life and duplicated in the life of others. Go ahead and say, Lord, I receive grace. According to Psalms 22 verse 22. Never forget it. This is the anchor scripture. Psalm 22 verse 22 that I will declare your name before the brethren. Your praise before the congregation of God's people. I refuse to be ungrateful. I develop a healthy Christian culture. The Bible says and they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the words your words of testimony have an overcoming ability in the spirit. Lord as a house we pray we will not just be grateful but we will be thankful from today oh God we make it a point of duty to testify to rejoice to notice the things that you are doing in our midst and Lord will give you praise Father we release you to keep doing more and bring a performance in every area of our lives
Keep praying one more minute. Say, Lord, I make up my mind. Some of you need to pray against timidity. Say, God has not given me the spirit of fear. Speak to yourself. Say, that devil of timidity. Or that lukewarm attitude that makes me trivialize what God is doing in my life and in my family and in my business and in my ministry and in your academics, in your job, whatever. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I see what you are doing. And I let the congregation know you are faithful. I will not let unbelievers doubt your faithfulness. Whereas you are alive and walking. Pray. Pray for Koinonia. Say, Lord, as a family of faith, we will not keep quiet over what you are doing. Men may call it pride. They may call it arrogance. But we will declare that the nations will know you are alive. Our God is not dead. The wonder-walking one is not dead. Say, Lord, I receive courage to create an atmosphere and let people know how God brought me out of the dunghill and set me upon a place of glory. How he changed the story of my family. How he made a way where there seemed to be no way. How that the words that were spoken here found expression in my life. For your glory, oh God. So I desire to give you the praise. And Lord, we will not relent. We take it as a kingdom culture that from today as a family of faith, like never before, we will declare your praises. We will not hide what you are doing in our midst. The Bible was written because men testified of what God did in their lives. They were not careful to write it. They said it as it is. They said the Red Sea parted. He gave them bread. He gave them quails. He made a way where there was no way. They did not hide it. Jesus multiplied bread. He didn't hide it. It was said and today we are blessed. It is as a result of the testimonies of yesterday that we know today that Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today and forever. We will not stop many from saying Jesus is the same. hallelujah hallelujah i release grace upon you to declare the wondrous works of the lord in the name of the lord jesus and any door of testimonies that has been closed over your life because of your negligence i pray that it be open tonight in the name of jesus the bible says you put a new song in my mouth a song of praise to our god many will see and will fear and put their trust in him he said you will put a new song not an old one a new song in my mouth a song of praise to our god many will see they will tremble and fear and say this god is a wonder working god and as a result they will put their trust in him hallelujah praise the lord lord we thank you we're out of time quickly let's get to the business of the night how many of you were blessed you received something do something with the word it's not just they that hear the the bible didn't say the ns creation is waiting for the manifestation or the explanation of the sons of god it's waiting for those who will do put the word to work hallelujah all right let's look at our text quickly we're examining the full gospel the whole truth about the priorities of God hallelujah what was our text revelations 19 hallelujah for time's sake I may not go there I want to do a quick review for those of you who were not there please everybody try and get the teachings they are powerful hallelujah and the Bible says, talking about the bride of Christ, the Lamb's wife, he said the city was four square, equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in depth, no part, no exaggeration, hallelujah. And we began to explain the fact that there has been, there are three problems with the Nigerian church. Number one, an exaggeration of certain truths and doctrines. Number two, uh, and 
under emphasis of certain truths and number three a misplacement of God's priorities hallelujah and I began to teach how that on careful examination of the Nigerian church there are seven major doctrines that make up the Nigerian church every church in Nigeria has one or more of these as their emphasis hallelujah number one is the gospel of grace the grace message we examine the grace message hallelujah how that is founded upon Ephesians 2 verse 8 we are saved by grace through faith not of works and we explain how that the grace message seeks to explore the dimension of God that supplies grace for the journey ahead and we said how that that doctrine is not wrong it's very very important Ephesians 1 2 and 3 tells us how that we have been seated with Christ and that there is a dimension of God that opens us up to the grace of God an act of his sovereignty he has no business with what we have done or what we didn't do hallelujah and we stress that the area of balance there is the fact that the word grace there is twofold one is unmerited access the second one is the ability to do and that's where the church body has missed it hallelujah and so we have a an over stretching and we do not bring the grace message properly in context and i said that if the grace message is not balanced it will produce a lazy and an irresponsible church because if you understand the grace message and it stands alone without other revelations giving it a richer meaning you will feel that there's no need to pray there's no need to fast there's no need to study after all the race is not to the swift the battle is not to the strong so why must you prepare the bible says the horse is prepared for the day of battle but safety is of the lord so why prepare the horse when safety is of the lord hallelujah he said except the lord watches over the city the watchmen watch in vain so if god is watching over the city why will the watchmen be watching the grace message in itself is not all there is and if you leave it um, alone in itself it will lead to a lot of errors hallelujah then we looked at the word of faith hallelujah how that the bible says the word is nigh thee romans 10 it said the word is nigh thee even in thy heart and in thy mouth the word of faith which we preach that if thou shall confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead thou shall be the word there is soteria hallelujah there are two basic words there are many words really but two basic words are translated saved or salvation one is sozo that has to do with healing the manifestation of god's power with respect to his healing ministry and the other one is soteria soteria means deliverance prosperity you name it hallelujah and we examine that the word of faith seeks to bring the revelation to the body of christ that there is a relationship between the creative power of the spoken word and what we get hallelujah genesis 1 and he said and he saw he said and he saw ezekiel 37 i prophesied as i was commanded and i heard hallelujah mark eleven twenty three. have the faith of god if thou shalt say to this mountain be thou removed and casted into the sea and will not doubt in your heart but believe that the things which you sayeth will come to pass you will have whatever you say hallelujah bible says the just shall live by faith he said we should hold fast our profession of faith so the word of faith seeks to open the body to the revelation that um if you do not speak the bible says for by thy words you are justified and by that word you are condemned. He said, where the word of a king is, there is power. The power of words. The creative power of the spoken word. And then an addition to it came when a great father of faith, Oral Roberts, came to a point where he found out that you can engage the principle of Genesis 8.22. That as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. And so on shall not cease. And he found out that when you when you add to your speaking you tie a seed and tie it to the law of seed time and harvest 
he saw that his results were amplified because he was engaging a principle that God had put and it became the core teaching of the word of faith how that you speak you release the creative power of God's word hallelujah and then you back it up with a seed an expression of your, your heart and your sacrifice and we examine that this is a dimension that is obtainable in God the only challenge that the word of faith um, brings to the body if not handled carefully is that I said it last week because or week after week before last that because of the lucrative nature are you listening to me people come and sow seeds and I mean why will the man of God not enjoy this dimension of ministry if every Sunday you are sowing seeds and you are bringing I can use different scriptures to manipulate you into giving all kinds of seeds and so on and so forth we'll talk more on that in the gospel of prosperity so there has been a, an abuse of the manifestation and people just come and they just talk it talk it talk it talk it and they don't do anything they don't abide by the principles the bible says in deuteronomy 28 verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to observe and to do not to speak to observe and to do all that i commanded this day that all of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you hallelujah so there is an observance joshua 1 verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth that's one he said but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do observe to do all that is written therein he said then shall your ways be prosperous and you shall have good success joshua 1 verse 8 so we saw that it's not just enough to just talk 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 and say now that i've spoken and i've dropped a seed everything is all right it is not necessarily true hallelujah that there are principles that we need to engage in right so that was the summary of the word of faith the tape is there you can get it the gospel of holiness hebrews 12 verse 14 pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no man will see god and i taught us that men began to explore certain dimensions of god because of the outbreak of carnality in the church we had all kinds of things the house of god being turned into a den of robbers being turned into a place of joke and play you know and christ is not exalted it's not lifted and certain people began to question and say no 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 because of the abundance and blessings that god was bringing to people people forgot about god you know and they began to serve themselves build empires for themselves and the bible says and holiness without which no man will see god hallelujah and i buttressed on what holiness was i think let me just state it very clearly i said holiness is twofold number one holiness is the reality that is furnished in the human spirit as a result of the presence of the holy spirit his first call holy before spirit hallelujah scriptural proof exodus chapter 3 moses sees a bush he had been there all the time a dirty bush and is now on fire and will not be burned and he comes near and the lord tells him remove your shoe for where you stand has suddenly become a holy ground nobody swept it nobody cleaned the leaves the presence of god makes things holy so when he comes upon you that nature of holiness comes upon you and then i told us that there is a second dimension and this is where a lot of people um do not are not careful to observe the balance hallelujah the book of Zechariah, the Bible talks about Joshua, the high priest. He said, he was standing before God, although he was a high priest, his garment was stained. And Satan came to accuse him. And what happened? The Bible says Satan was rebuked. Correct? But God did not leave him that way. He said he should remove the garment. So there is a doing. Are you listening to me? On account of what Christ has done, there is an enabling grace to walk. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. And we did examine certain things, how that living a life of holiness is cardinal to receiving the blessings of God. 
Bible says if all our hope is in this life alone, we are of all men most miserable. So we, we emphasize separating religion from holiness. And then we express the fact that the ultimate goal of holiness is not to compare people to people and say this person is doing this, this person is doing that. But that a life of true holiness brings you to a point where you have love for people. If you claim to be holy and you do not love God's people, you are a hypocrite. Hallelujah. I'm running because I, I need us to... Then we got to the teaching on Satan, demons and deliverance. What is theologically called demonology. The study of Satan, the operation and the organization of the satanic kingdom. Hallelujah. I expressed to us that certain believers began to explore God. And this dimension was opened primarily by prayer and prophetic ministries. Because of their natural inclination to the realm of the spirit. Either through visions, through dreams, through prophetic encounters. Spending hours and days in the spirit. And so their eyes will be open and then they will have a lot of encounters. Hallelujah. And they began to find out that certain teachings that seem to trivialize some things about Satan and the knowledge of spiritual things um, were not exactly correct for the body of Christ. 2 Corinthians 2.11 is the anchor scripture. It said, for we are not unaware of the devil's devices. So the Bible tells us that um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against rulers of darkness and against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places hallelujah and great servants of god like dr dk olukoya and cac and great prayer ministries began to explore this dimension of god and they began to tell the body hey 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 hold on you people are trivializing too many things i think you should reconsider one or two things Especially for the teaching that say, I want someone is born again, you are in Christ. That's all right, nothing. But they found out that certain people who, although they were born again, although they were tongue talking, they, they saw certain levels of demonic influences in their lives. And it began to raise questions. And these men saw in the spirit that there are pastors who were still suffering with things like masturbation, suffering with things like a gay lifestyle and the rest. He said, but these guys are anointed. They are healing the sick. That means that there is something more. Are you following me now? And they began to explore to let us know that look, oh, this initial salvation is only the beginning. It's not the end. That Satan can be able to leech in the souls of men and that it takes the same power to be activated in the solical realm to bring a man to that dimension that his spirit has experienced. And so we began to explore scriptures like First Peter 1 verse 9, he said, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. And so we found out that the salvation of the spirit is not enough. The Bible talks about the salvation of the soul. Then it talks about the consummation of all things, the salvation of the body. Hallelujah. So it led people to begin to study how that there can be certain things that can exist, like generational causes, spirit husband, spirit wife, ancient curses, and all kinds of things. And over time, these men that explored this dimension brought forth certain levels of results. There were people who were delivered from the power of darkness and brought genuine testimonies that they were involved in causing some of these things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then we, we see that Jesus himself, I told you four things characterize the ministry of Jesus. Number one, he preached. Number two, he taught. Number three, he healed the sick. Number four, he casted out devils. This was consistent. Mark chapter one, Mark chapter two, Mark chapter three. You read all through, you see it. He preached, he taught, he healed the sick, he casted out devils. In Matthew chapter 10, when he was sending the disciples, he sent them forth and he told them, he said, go, heal the sick, cast out devils, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead heal the sick cast out devils when he was reading his mandate in luke chapter 4 from verse 17 when the scroll the book of isaiah was given to him he said the spirit of the lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free when he looked in luke 12 
to the woman who was bowed he looked at her and from the spirit he saw that this woman had been tied and he said woman thou art loosed from your infirmity that means that infirmity was a spirit the bible says when he came back from his transfiguration with peter james and john he saw the disciples struggling with one man's child and the guy was epileptic and the bible says jesus rebuked a deaf and dumb spirit from an epileptic patient the bible never tells us the guy was not speaking but jesus looked and saw that there was an operation and he could detect the spirit that was at work on his way to gadara the sea began to be boisterous and we understand that it was not just water it was the demons who were trying to make the journey futile because as soon as he crossed to gadara a madman was waiting for him there the bible says the guy was mad and he stayed in caves who told him jesus was coming the first people to greet him was the legion the man and the legions of darkness hallelujah and so we see that it would be stupid for you to assume that it's not necessary all these things people are talking about demons no 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 the ministry of deliverance is key to the church the church does not know so much about the ministry of deliverance either because it has not been taught properly or it has been exaggerated and this is why we are considering the full gospel are you following me we stopped from there last week so let's continue help us holy spirit facts about satan demons and deliverance now it's not my goal to make you angry tonight but if that happens please i'm sorry let me apologize before time hallelujah because this is a sensitive topic and we're going to talk about it and i'm going to say a lot of things that may not be um uh i know there are different churches represented here there are deliverance ministries represented here whatever it is let's look at the word of god these are not my opinions hallelujah facts about satan number one satan was an archangel he was a cherub really the bible calls him the anointed cherub that covereth they fell from their original estate and were judged according to revelations there was war in heaven and satan lucifer that was his name before the fall the son of the morning the bible calls him he was the cherub closest to god an act of pride and rebellion got him to a point where he said i will exalt myself above the stars of god and there was war in heaven the bible says the dragon fought and michael fought and he prevailed not and he was casted to the earth and there was a lamentation woe to the inhabitants of the earth because satan had been casted to the earth hallelujah and then he began to deceive man and so on and so forth so number one satan is not omnipresent he cannot be everywhere at the same time please deliver yourself tonight satan cannot be everywhere at the same time oh satan did this to me no it's not satan hallelujah two satan is not omniscient satan does not know all things let me give you two scriptural proofs quickly one from old testament one from new testament when moses was born satan had been scouting for the seed of the woman he did not know exactly who the seed was and he suspected it was moses so he moved through the heart of pharaoh and what happened all the children were killed that tells me there is a lot of experiments there if satan was omniscient he will knew ex he will know exactly is that correct and then in, in 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 the new testament when jesus was born same thing happened you see that move through herod so satan is not omni is not omniscient he's not, he doesn't know all things that's not true there are some things satan does not know hallelujah for instance when we pray in tongues there are some things satan does not know the bible says eyes have not seen it is a human eyes he said eyes any eye at all has not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of any man so satan does not know what god has prepared for them that love god it is exclusively the holy ghost the way satan knows the things that are, that are about to happen to you is because of certain operations that happen in the realm of the spirit for instance an unusual manifestation of angels when they saw the star, Satan said something is happening somewhere. Start tracing the star. Hallelujah. 
So for many of you who have been taught that Satan knows everything about me, it's not true. You may want to ask, so how do false prophets know certain things about people? It's a simple operation of spiritual laws. In this realm, we are bounded by three dimensions. In the realm of the spirit, there are more than three dimensions. Are you listening to me? And because of the existence of certain dimensions, you can tap into certain things, past, present, and future. These things are not necessary. They are not luxury in the realm of the spirit. And so by act of divination and sorcery, they can peep into certain dimensions of the future. And people can come in with some words. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's of God. Hallelujah. Moses threw his rod. He became a serpent. What happened? Pharaoh brought his own rod too and he became a serpent. Okay? Satan is not omnipotent. He's not all powerful. I beg you. Believe this revelation. Satan is not all powerful. I need to preach this to you. Because I'm irritated at the emphasis that people have given. Especially prophets. Prophets. They talk so much about the satanic kingdom and how powerful Satan is. And I was in the spirit and I saw this great beast. I'm telling you, you cannot imagine. This beast was so powerful. And the people are watching it as if they are in a cinema. That's it and he came and the people are, are running back. They say, you mean the demon came? And you can't go back home again. Because in your mind, you are imagining that mental picture. So how is the tale like? And we use all kinds of graphic images in church. And we say, though I walk through the valley. And the person is imagining a valley. And forever they keep imagining a valley, even in the daytime. Hallelujah. It is true that we shouldn't be unaware of Satan's devices. But what is it about Satan that is important to the church? Quickly, Luke 10, 18. Luke 10, 18. We're exploring the word. Luke 10, 18. Oh, let me start from verse 17. And the 70 returned with joy, saying, Hallelujah. Have you opened it? I want you to read it. Are you ready? Want to read? And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us through thy name. Stop. He said, Even who? Are subject to who? Us. Say, Demons are subject to me. Say, Demons are subject to me. The 70 came back and they were surprised. They said, ah, Lord, even the demons, we thought it's only, even the demons are subject to us. That means it wasn't only demons that were subject, because they even, that means they were so, there was something else. Hallelujah. And Jesus tells us what that something else is. 10 verse 19, or verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning. Do what? Satan is defeated. Say it after me. Satan is defeated. He's not being defeated. He's not going to be defeated. You must get this revelation. Satan has been defeated. So when we pray and when we declare God's word, what are we doing? We are establishing that victory in our lives. We are establishing it. Because Satan will not keep quiet. He will not give up. Although he's a defeated foe. He runs through and foe. Can I tell you something? Look up please. It is possible for a man to be free of the attacks of Satan. There's no time I would have shown you. Where Satan himself gave a testimony in Job chapter 1. Satan came, the sons of God gathered, and the Bible says Satan was among them. And the Lord asked him, he said, where are you coming from? He said, to and fro, proves that he's not omnipresent. Correct? He said, from moving to and fro the earth. He said, in the midst of your voyage around the world, did you ever come across a man called Job? He said, of course. 
And Satan said, I testify that I could not do anything about that man. He said, have you not blessed him and built a hedge round about? In other words, Satan tried through every means. And he said, I give up. And he was reporting Job to God. He said, it is true that a man can be so fortified that I did not penetrate him. So keep that teaching that tells you that, oh, one day somewhere, no. It is possible. Jesus lived that kind of life. Say amen. amen. Say after me, Satan is fallen. 19. Oh, let, let's leave 19. We are coming back there. The ministry of deliverance. What is deliverance? Please look up. Comes from the word deliver. What does he mean to deliver? Ladies. What, is, what does he mean to deliver? Are you joking? What does he mean to deliver? It doesn't necessarily mean to bring forth. It means to take out of where the person is. It's not everything you bring forth. Some things leave. You don't bring forth demons. You bring forth miracles. You bring forth new levels. You cast out demons. Hallelujah. So, deliverance is um, the operation of the anointing of the Spirit or the operation of the Holy Ghost that separates a man from whatever challenge, whatever demonic influence or satanic predicaments that attempt to influence that person's life by the name and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's called deliverance. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Obadiah 117, Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. And because of the deliverance and the holiness, what will happen? The people of God will possess their possessions. That means between you and your possession, at times Satan will stand to block. But when there is that deliverance, deliverance does not necessarily mean taking a demon out of a man. Hallelujah. Deliverance means being saved, preserved, taken away from situations that will stop you from walking in the reality of what God has destined for you. Hallelujah. We see deliverance all over scripture. In Matthew 8 verse 16, the Bible says, And he casted out the devils with his word. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent forth his word. And his word he led them. And delivered them from all their destructions. He sent forth his word. Hallelujah. So it's very very important. I need you to know this. Demons exist. Satan exists. And there's all kinds of strata of satanic kingdom. What's their job? To thwart the plan and the agenda of God. The universal counsel of God. And to thwart the destinies of men. They use all kinds of things. Sickness, failure, delay, defeat. Everywhere you just name it. There are numerous demons and spirits and all kinds of things. In one man there was a legion. You can imagine. One man. A legion in one man. It tells you how many they are. But just when the servant was overwhelmed by the army, Elijah said, Oh God, open his eyes that he will know. I hope you realize that Satan fell with one third of the angels. That means there's two thirds. For every one demon, one fallen angel, there are two angels that are alive and strong. And the Bible did not tell us God has stopped creating them. He said, For thou hast created all things. He said, They are and they were and are being created. God has not stopped creation. Are you listening to me? It is exclusively within his ability to keep creating. For he upholds all things by the word of his power. Are you getting blessed? So this is very important for you to know. Can you imagine? 
I thought we'd be able to cover so much. Okay. So the ministry of deliverance is not to be despised. There are many of you that have certain challenges and habits and things in your life. And you need the intervention of God. You need the intervention of the word. Listen to me. The primary tool of deliverance is God's word. Say God's word. Not prophets. Not mantles. Not, not pure water. Not anointing oil. Those things are prophetic symbolisms. Are you listening to me? We are not castigating them. If they are used with revelation, they can produce results. But I'm saying you need to realize, I've done a teaching about the word of God, the living logos. Please get the teaching. He casted out the devils with his word. Hallelujah. So how do we get free from the influence of demons? Oh, hold on. I need to tell you this. There are three levels of demonic operations and influences over the lives of people. Number one is what we call possession. Total control of that individual. That's what we get in the case of those who have sold their souls to devils. Sorcerers, certain witches who have made covenants with their, they've sold their soul literally. They are under the full weight and the influence of demons. They have become oracles. Hallelujah. The remedy for that, that level of acute possession in your spirit is new birth, salvation. Let me tell you something. No matter how much you lay hands and cast out devils from a man, if that person is not born again and he does not accept the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you only wasted your time. I have found out that many deliverance ministries are not concerned about the salvation of the victims. They are just concerned about manifestation. Hold on, we are getting there. There is the doctrine of power and the charismatic move of the spirit. We are going to get there. There are many people who are just excited. And people just cough out all kinds of things. And the prophet is laughing, he's standing. King of kings and lord of lords. Two weeks again, you see the same person come back full of demons because jesus gave us a mystery he said when a demon leaves a man what happens he goes through arid regions looking for a place of refuge and not finding any what happens he says let me arise and go back to my house he called it his house so that means that you have been delivered does not mean satan will stop seeing that is his house as far as he's concerned, he went on sabbatical. He said, let me visit again and find out what is happening. He said he will come and find it swept, clean, but what? Empty. And the Bible says, behold, I stand and I knock. There is a vacuum that only Jesus Christ can fill. There are many deliverance cases that the solution is for the people to be born again. Hallelujah. I've led people to Christ and the moment they are confessing Jesus Christ, you see all kinds of manifestations, of course. Because light cannot dwell with darkness. Are you listening to me? So, don't just get excited every time you touch somebody and the person starts manifesting and say, hey, snake, hey, tortoise, hey, cobra, hey, this, hey, that, hey, giraffe, hey, this. Beyond those manifestations, is the person born again? If the person is not born again, the demons run away because of the light and the anointing of God. But the person leaves and they will come back. So we have people consistently struggling. All kinds of people, they are not born again. They are not willing to be serious with God. Again and again, the same people coughing out tortoises, coughing out worms coughing out everything that they can cough out nobody will buy any bucket here for any bunny and I mean what I said I mean it seriously nobody is buying any bucket for anybody The demons can go out. If you vomit, we'll pack it. But we will not encourage that.
manifestation. The demons can go out. You didn't necessarily eat anything for them to come. They can leave. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You see the reason why I don't believe in all those carnal things because the Bible says it's not about carnal things. Ejimi gave us a story some years ago about, I think was it, um, she, he came to set the captives free. What's her name? Rebecca Brown. She came for a deliverance session in Lagos. And when she came, she said, remember the story? She said, in the name of Jesus, every demon here, go. And then when she finished preaching, Nigerians were disappointed. The prayer people say, nah, this thing has not finished. Then the pastor came up. Say, madam, thank you so much for what you have done. But in Nigeria here, we believe in warming ourselves. More everybody stand up, come on. And when they shook themselves, more say, hey, it's now this thing has happened. Now, of course, oftentimes, because of the activity that happens, you can't just sit down and say, Satan, I would really love you to leave. Do you mind? It doesn't happen that way. Hallelujah. It doesn't happen that way. Psalm 66. He said, through the greatness of thy power. He said, how awesome are your works, O Lord. He said, through the greatness of thy power will thy enemies submit themselves to you. It won't just happen because you can laugh through the greatness. Power must be exact, must be generated in the spirit. Through the greatness of your power will the enemy submit themselves. You don't just come and say, Satan, the Bible says no man will enter a house and spoil that house without first doing what? Binding the strong man. So when you see us praying and say, Satan, get lost. Oedeko wrote a book called Satan, get lost. Many of you say, yeah, all these things are not necessary. Okay. Oh. Praise God. How do we get free from Satan? James 4 verse 7. This is the major reason why Satan has access to the lives of people. Let's run. James. James 4 verse 7. Anybody there? Please. Hold on. Submit yourselves therefore. This is, this is God now giving us a recommendation through his servant. Yes sir. He says submit yourself therefore to what? To God. Hold on. Many people resist the devil and he doesn't flee. You know why? We don't complete that scripture. What's the first step? Submit yourself. He said come under his governing authority. Submit yourselves first to God. And then when that has been done, he said, resist the devil and he will flee. Hmm. You see where we have been missing it? Oh, Satan, I bind you. Oh, Satan, I bind you. Oh, Satan, I beg you. Oh, Satan, please, please, please. Oh, yeah, please, please. I will not shout again. Just go. There are many of you, well, I don't believe here, but there are many believers suffering from all kinds of things. Many of you cannot sleep in the night. I told you I used to be oppressed by demons. True life story. As soon as I lie down to sleep, I would literally, spirits, they will just enter my room. Free flow. I don't know whether it was because of me or my unbelieving roommate. But I was also not a believer, you see. I, I mean, I was born again, but it used to be very bad. Every time it was evening, I, I would just know that this is, it was in court, Lontenese court. Light entered my spirit. Hallelujah. I found that scripture that said, I have given you authority. Luke 10, 19. This is Jesus speaking. Behold, I give you power over snakes. Come on now, snake spirit, over snakes. Thank God he was the first to be mentioned there. Scorpions. And how many? All. Say after me, all. Because for some of you, it's some. Over all the powers of the enemy. He said, and nothing shall by any means. 
You are English students and you went to school. What does any means mean? Any method, any way, through food, through dream. If I have a dream and I eat, I sure know that it's God that gave me that food. No devil will give me anything to eat. But there are many of you that dream and you see all kinds of satanic things. And you laugh about it, but it's really satanic because you've not taken your ground. Let me tell you something. Take this thing seriously. Many of you have not taken out time to address some things in your life. You keep laughing about it and you say it's not serious. I warned the devil since. I warned him since. Hallelujah. You must take some time. Maybe this will be the week that you go and lock yourself alone. And say, Satan, men of God have been speaking to you on my behalf, but I want to talk to you by myself today. Let me tell you something. This is the first, no, well, it's not the first. This is the last time. Enough of that devilish oppression. And you don't just speak and say, because my name is Joshua. The word, it is written. It is written. Authority have been given unto me against principalities, against powers. And in the name of Jesus, I confront this devil. I confront this situation. Lift up your heads, O ye gate. You need to settle some things in your life. Many of you just watch things happen. Things are not going right and you are just laughing. You just say, one day, I know my God is alive. You will be very surprised. If you don't take a step, the Bible says the people saw Jesus Christ and they tore the zinc and said, we have given ourselves the date of miracle today. Are you listening to me? Some of you need to go and lock up yourself and find scriptures and end some things in your life once and for all. Say amen. amen. There are many preachers who will not admit this. But you look at their lives and you see them being victims of certain things. Although they are preachers. Although they are men of God. They can't look at a lady and go free. Lie, lie. They can heal. They can do everything. That you are a new creation in Christ. Listen to me. That you are a new creation in Christ. Does not mean you stand and stand upon God's word. But let me tell you what I do not believe about deliverance. Listen to me. I can't be binding Satan every day of my life. There are more important things to do. It's not a sin. But it's a weight that can be done away with. There are many of us that all we think about is Satan. What he can do. I woke up this morning. I listened to a man of God. He said he went somewhere and before the meeting they bounded and casted devils. And then he was going to have a meeting with the leaders and they were bounding again. He, he called the pastor. He said I thought we just did that some hours ago. Listen. Many of us have insulted God too much. We make it look like if you ask, God is helpless. Satan can bounce into your life any day, any time. Look up, please. Somebody moves on the road and matches a charm, correct? Did the person believe the charm will affect him? But the charm still affects him. So if Satan can veto somebody's faith and step in, and God takes his reputation. Somebody matches a charm without knowing. And suddenly his legs start swelling. This is Satan. Making your faith nonsense. And then the Bible calls the word of God a more sure word of prophecy. And then we do it and say just hold on. You don't know how Satan can come. I mean this life. Don't insult my God. Are you listening to me? Don't insult my God. I believe I have taken many poisons in my life. We've gone from place to place. I've eaten everything they gave me. It's only when we get to heaven or one day if God opens my eyes that I will see. 
I may not know how many people have taken my names to native doctors, shrines. I know I've seen it a number of times. <laughs> See, let me tell you something. Change your mindset. Tell your neighbor, change your mindset. Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are, are lovely, whatsoever things are noble, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, what did he tell you to do? Think on these things. What are you thinking on? Many of us are angry with our roommates, angry with our friends. Your life has become madness because everything you see, you see dust on your shoes, you look and say, this dust, why is it on one side? Oh God, clean your shoes and move forward. Don't make God look like an idiot. He gave you authority. Regardless of what it is, you have authority. A lot of people come to cast out devils. Who are you? What is your name? When did you enter this body? What did you do this? They may not be, it may not be wrong, but it's a weight. I tell you the truth, it's a weight. If we spend, I've, I've seen meetings, we spend hours doing deliverance and we spend so little time teaching the word. A man of God is prophesying from morning till evening and then they just do a little exhortation of 20 minutes and the prophet said, now I need to move in my office and people say yes. They would die as a congregation. It's the word of God. You see, I found your word and I did eat them. Hallelujah. You empower the church by giving them the revelation of God's word that will set them above. Are you listening to me? So I have a serious problem with ministries that all they do, all they do morning till night, all they do is just prophecy and casting out devils. Demons are rolling morning till night. Can the people be taught the word of God? Do you really believe in the power of the word? Now, I'm not saying there's no place. There is, we do that miracle service. But we spend three weeks doing what? Teaching you the word. It says you are clean through the word that I've spoken unto you. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. You must get to a point where you are full of God's word. Only God knows how many charm we have matched. Only God knows how many. They found a snake one time in my ceiling. And they called some people from ABU to come. Okay, I don't know who, who was around. They came and did the, 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 I didn't know they used jazz. I asked the guy, where is the, this thing for this? Thing? He just brought out one thing and showed me. I said, hey, my mind. I said, one that shall never end. We'll see. The guy was disappointed. The guy was, that thing didn't work. Oh, it didn't work around my vicinity. It didn't work. The light shines in darkness. I said, because the guy swore he put that in. He said, we won't see that snake. In the evening, I saw the snake again. And God was letting me know that this thing that happened is drama. The guy vowed. The neighbor said that every time the guy comes, he's a popular guy. He calls the snake by their jars and the snake comes out that guy called the snake they, fumed, they put all kinds of things it didn't work and I said alright Lord St. Patrick casted out snake from Ireland I just need it around my vicinity don't come back here again hallelujah do you believe this I have given you authority let this enter your spirit you are a bank of power I have given you authority. Believe it. One of our ladies went to a native doctor one time. For whatever reason, I do not know. The guy said she should bring 30,000 and goat and other things. And then he gave her something to go and bath with. And when she went to bath with, it disappeared. She ran to him and said, ah, Baba, it has disappeared. He said, ah, there's trouble. And then she just said, she'll come and confess and meet me. When she met me, I said, go and tell the native doctor. I'm not going to pray for you first. Go and tell him that Joshua Selman said he should check in the realm of the spirit and see the person talking to him. That if you ever harass you again, they will take his dead body out of his shrine. 
if you have not seen the burning bush don't stand before pharaoh you will die like a chicken hallelujah we have gone for crusades men of god and we have seen the wonder working power of god you see us cast out devils after koinonia and i have a sound sleep given by god every night if i'm awake it's because i'm walking if the devil wakes me i won't wake up i will ask him what is what consign agbero with overload I won't quarrel him and say, ah, go, go. <laughs> Just please, get out of my presence. I mean what I'm saying. Many of you say, keep talking like this. I'm, I've been saying this thing for years. Is it not true? I've been saying this thing for years. Please ask them. They will confirm it. Today we are flying on the wings of, evil, of, of eagles as if Satan does not exist. You think it's his goal for you to come here? Look at the salvations and the rest. So that devil that has been knocking your zinc, ask him, come down. Come down. Why are you disturbing me? He wants to put in you the spirit of fear. How do you react? Hey, no. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I declare sound sleep this night by the power of the Holy Ghost. And you lie down and sleep. go for a crusade and come back and start crying and say hey there's going to be a fight back i said it when we we're preparing for punching crusade if you remember i said satan has always wanted to kill you he didn't just start liking to kill you on your way to a crusade ground let me tell you something a trace of satan's wickedness is seen in boko haram they will kill anybody when they have the opportunity that satan has not killed you it's not that he doesn't want to he cannot We travel all the time to different places i've said it here even if satan drives my car i will go i will tell him take me to so 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 place i just are you not afraid of satan this is the mindset i want to deliver you from that mindset say look at the statements you are making they are hearing you oh there was there was a confession now there was a there are some people that used to come for koinonia one occult person he came and met me one time to confess he's not around they said they have been watching me for years that's what he said they said they watched me when i went to south africa while i was snapping with kobus they were watching when i was having my retreat he said we watched you for 72 hours your eyes did not see daylight we watched you when you were praying beginning to end and I, my mind, I say, happy viewing. I asked him, no, I asked him a question. Listen, listen. Truth story. I think his brother may be here. I said, when you people come for Koinonia, what happens to you? He says, they hang on from a far distance and stand and watch because of the fire of God. How many of you remember the guy, Sadiq Ibrahim? Remember his story? Sadiq Ibrahim was outside. This guy slept in the graveyard for three days to collect the power of invincibility. Three days he was outside. When I stood on the platform here, what happened? He said, when he saw people falling, he looked and he said, yes, there's power in this place. He said, whether it's demonic power or whatever power, there is power. Because he has slept and he knows the equivalent of the sacrifice it takes to get that power. Let me tell you something, friends. Not all human beings are equal. There are terrestrial beings. There are celestial beings. Ask demons have time for demons and satan and nonsense he casted them with his word many of you have been watching demons fly freely in your family and you are just laughing what are you there for say i have authority over satan hallelujah Ah, we don't have time I really wanted to touch on the gospel of prosperity I thought I'll be able to end tonight with the gospel of prosperity it's 9 o'clock already let me just see we didn't even do anything oh. 
Hallelujah. How time flies. So why do you sleep in some of your churches? 30 minutes you are asleep. And you are looking at the time. I don't, I'm not mocking anybody, but I'm saying nothing can replace lack of fire. Not your suit, not eloquence, not shouting. Because I've seen a day boy, you just talk and threw out a Holy Ghost night with you. People are wide awake. And I've seen other people jacking and the other person is sleeping. It's until the pastor comes and says, I, I said this! And again, the guy wakes up. And he shouts alone, yes! And he says, yes, for what? Hallelujah. That's why we pray. We don't want a fireless ministry. Hallelujah. Have you received something tonight? The word of God is supposed to make you powerful. I want you to live here tonight with the revelation that you have authority over devils. If you don't believe this, I don't know how to help you again. We have magnified Satan too much. It's too much. It's even irritating. Too much. Many of us have the list of all kinds of demons in our books. How many names of God have you written in your book? Jesus defeated Satan. I was not there, but his spirit bears witness. That he was not lying to me. And I believe it. Do you believe it? Saints of God, do you believe it? See, because we need to bring this issue of Satan and demons. We need to clarify it once and for all. Can you get angry with yourself and use this week to pray? And say, Satan, I'm ready to stand upon the word of God. See, many of you go to Satan and when, when you get there or to wherever, you now start saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, leave. What is your scriptural basis? Say after me, it is written. That must be, there must be, the Bible says, Isaiah 40 verse 41. It said, present your case, said the Lord, bring forth your strong reasons. Bring forth your strong reasons. Present your case. We used to call in, in the campus then a, a court, long tennis court. What do you do in the court? It wasn't because they used to play basketball there. It was a place where we settle issues through the power of God's word. Those days you see people, somebody will come with his Bible and lie down first for two hours searching the scripture while he has he has, get, he has gotten it, he will line it up. He say, now hear me, Satan, it is written. There are many of you who are dying of many things. Satan is having a free ride through your life. You say it's like that. In our family, it's like that. When will it end? Hello? When will it end? You say, next miracle service will jump and come. And the demons stand there and wait. And you come and then they finish. They, they can't come here. I assure you, they won't come here. And then when you go back there, what happens? There are many of us, the, your own issue is you have refused to be born again. Every time they talk about being born again, you just say, no. My name is Joshua. And Joshua is the Hebrew form, Jehoshua. The same as Jesus. I'm Jesus' namesake. And you will not get born again. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. That's the problem with a lot of people. Oh, you are born again, oh, but you are not on fire. You are lukewarm. Satan can ride in and out of your life. Prayer life, zero. Word life, zero. Obedience to God's principles, zero. Bishop Oedeko always says something that I love. He says, no matter how mad a man is, he will never enter fire by mistake. No matter the guy is mad, they say, give way. If he sees fire, he will move this way. No matter how mad a man is, he knows fire when he sees it. And the Bible says, he maketh his angel spirits and his ministers, what? Flame. 
like Reinhard Bonke, he says evangelism by fire. This is not just the kind of fire we preach today. That one is the real fire. Real fire. Say I'm on fire for God. Say it, I'm on fire for God. See, you must be too hot for Satan. I pity the person who calls my name in a shrine. The, the shrine person will die for nothing. It's not that I kill the person. It's the natural consequence. I'm telling you. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. God cannot be lying. A man of God went for a meeting and they, when he came in the morning, he saw that they caught chicken. No, no. He just entered his room and came out and he saw chicken. He said, who dropped this chicken here? And then he smiled. He said, thank you, Jesus. He had been fasting and he had been praying. True life story. The guy was so happy. He said, yes, Lord. Once again, God used the stupidity of witches to answer the prayer of his servant. The guy pieces that in and he ate it. I'm telling you. Yes, he did. He ate it. He gave thanks. The Bible says give thanks and eat. We are going to pray. He gave thanks. Archbishop Benson Idahosa, he went to preach somewhere. Wild man on fire. When he came out, he saw a calabash. He just clapped his hands. He carried the calabash. He said, who dropped this calabash? His fear was for the person, not for himself. He said, who dropped this calabash? Everybody kept quiet. He said, I'm begging now. Who dropped this calabash? Because if I release it to fall down, the person will die. And that was how he released it. As soon as he dropped, the person died there. Hallelujah. I had a testimony that happened some months ago. I think a thief came to steal in Canaan land. And he was hiding behind a tree. And Oyedeko was speaking and he shouted from the altar and the man fell down there and died instantly. Instanta. He died there. Say I'm too hot for Satan. Say it. Some of you are afraid of saying it. I have given you authority. That's why we smile our way to the miracle service every week. No pressure whatsoever. No pressure whatsoever. There are many men of God. When they come, you see them sweating. When they see some kinds of... Uh -uh. Bishop Oedeko had one guy who was harassing people and he told the guy, enter the car. He drove with him to one place by, I think, 12 or 1 a.m. in the night and told the witch to come out. He told him, come out. He said, now, anything I tell you to do, do it. It's only me and here. The Satan is called the prince of darkness. Here is dark, me and you. He said, now lie down. And the guy lay down. He said, where is he? He said, he cannot come here. He said, as long as you are in the world, you are the light of the world. As long as you are in the light. As long as you are in believe this, brothers and sisters, otherwise your journey will be very long in life. Believe this. I refuse to believe. Nobody will preach me into exalting Satan above Jesus Christ. No, sir. See, let me tell you, I have seen demons in the spirit. Are you listening to me? Don't you think I'm just talking? Oh, I've seen demons, and they are intimidating. When you see the strong, there are certain demons that are about 32 feet. 32 feet, you see them. Many of you don't pray, so you don't even know what I'm talking about. You only share the grace and roam around making noise. When David saw Goliath, he said, Goliath, I come to you in a name. The Emir of Zazo some years ago, they could not admit one guy in NDA because he was too short. There's the height and he was too short. And they said, we can't take you. You passed the test. And the guy was angry and they, they, they brought the case to the Emir. And the Emir said, go and tell the commandant that the Emir of Zazo has added the height of this boy. And they took him in. Come on now. 
Talk of, talk of, say connection. That's how God added the height of David. Goliath said, am I a dog? He said, hold on, you will know. He said, let me tell you what I will do to you. This is how it will happen. I will use this sling and take your head. Afterwards, I will remove your, your head and I will give it to the dead. Are you ready? At least let me, let, let me give you the privilege of knowing how you will die. Who are thou uncircumcised Philistines? The Bible says when you stand, say, who are thou mountain? See, many of you, many of you are, are insulting God. You are always thinking of what Satan can do, what you will do, which spirit is coming now. Can you not think of the majesty of God? Can you not think of, the Bible says he upholds all things by the word of his power. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray for five minutes. Go ahead and pray in tongues. Say, Lord, light has come to me right now. I know certain things about Satan right now. He is not all powerful. Say, Satan, you have been deceiving me. Making me esteem you as the Almighty. But tonight, by revelation, I know you are not the Almighty. I have been given authority. Pray. Over snakes. Over scorpions. Over snakes. Scorpions. Over curses. Over activities of witchcraft. Over the manifestations of the devil. Lift your voice and pray. Even the lawful captives, even the lawful captives, the captives of the mighty shall be delivered. He said, I will contend with them that contend with you. I will contend with them that contend with you. And I will give you peace. I will contend with them that contend with you. Go ahead and pray. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To bring you a future and an expected end. But I know whom I have believed. Satan get lost lift your voice now and pray say Satan take your hands off my life pray it for it is written it is written even the demons are subject to me in the name of Jesus go ahead and declare thou devil of depression now devil of depression terminal disease manifestations of witchcraft in my life and in my family your reign is terminated tonight come on pray you are in the house of God and upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance there shall be holiness every devil every demon every spirit standing in my way in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus give way come on pray say Lord I'm anointed I'm powerful The reign of Satan ends in my life. Hallelujah. 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 What you don't confront, you will never conquer.
in the next one minute we are going to pray there are some things that have lingered in your life some devilish dreams some demonic oppressions you've been laughing about it people come to press you sleep with you in the night you are laughing but you know you are a victim of these things all kinds of objects demonic nonsense people are going to heaven you are going to hell hell in the earth because of all kinds of things you can't sleep in the night you hear voices many of you hallucinate many of you do all kinds of devilish things right now with your own mouth and your own authority i like you to lift your voice get angry come on get angry and pray I have been given authority over snakes, scorpions. Please pray. Every devil that harasses you in the night, you are upon Mount Zion where there is deliverance. I'm above thrones, dominions, powers, every name that is named every name me kabala na ba shata ba katalia ranta ba seta ba na boss Satan I have no business with you you have no business in my life pray pray for your family pray for your father Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One scripture, last prayer point. Psalm 66. I love Psalm 66, a rich verse. I want to give you a scripture that you used to pray this week. How many of you are getting angry in your spirit? I hope you are not just getting excited for nothing. You will die. You will die. Every day you keep hearing the voice. You will die. You can't go out. You can't. Some of you have stopped biking. You will die. There are many of you that hear all kinds of suicidal voices. Go and hang yourself. And you are even contemplating. Even if I'm not born again, that spirit won't work in my life. Hang myself. I love myself. I love myself so much. Are you there? Thank you, Jesus. Verse 3. We are going to read it together. Psalm 66, verse 3. Are you there? One to read. Say unto God. Through the greatness of thy power shall your enemies do what? Shall your enemies do what? He said, Lord, how marvelous are your works. They are all inspiring. He didn't say the enemies will subject because your teeth is white and you can shout. He said, through the greatness of your power. Through the greatness. And the Bible says now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power so the power is working in me say the power is working in me Romans 10 Romans 10 verse 12 are you there want to read for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him he said there is neither who that means there is no third world nation there is no first world nation those things are just economic jargons let me tell you in the eyes of god he said there is neither jew nor greek but God is rich unto every man. 
Tonight you'll be hearing many truths that will shock you and abuse many things that you have believed and held on to. Then we'll balance the ones that need to balance. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Listen to me. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord in UK, in America, in Israel, in Iraq, in Iran, God has promised that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is that correct? We have people born again in Iraq. We have people born again in Kuwait. We have people born again in South Africa. We have people born again in Zimbabwe. In other words, God is rich unto all men. Are you listening to me? The truth of God is a symbol of his justice and his fairness to all men. And the Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. Praise the Lord. So the prosperity package of God is available unto everybody. But listen, it is available to everybody but it's not accessible to everybody. Not everybody will walk in it. It's only accessible to those who are careful enough to diligently find out God's program. Not Nigeria's program. Not America's program. Not the 21st century program. Thank God for all of the education and the packages and all of this. But let me tell you the truth. The word of God stands forever. And there is nothing that can be done against the truth. But for the truth. Are you getting blessed tonight? Praise God. What is prosperity? I want to shock you tonight. Let me tell you what prosperity is not. Having your needs met is not prosperity. It's called welfare. Are you listening to me? Having your needs met is not what the Bible calls prosperity. We are beginning to balance the gospel of prosperity now. Because for many believers, our, the circumference of our concept of prosperity is that I come to a point where I have a job or I have whatever and I have enough for myself, my wife and my children. Having, meeting the ability to meet your need is not called prosperity. It's called welfare. You are faring well if your needs are met. You can afford the fees of your children you have. You are not lacking something to eat. The biblical definition of prosperity is given in scripture. Genesis 12. Don't open there. Genesis 12 verse 2. When you read Genesis 12 verse 1 and 2, the, God called Abraham out. And he said, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. He said, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So, prosperity is not having money to feed yourself, to feed your family, give your mother some, give your father some. That's not prosperity. That's welfare. Many prosperity preachers are still in the realm of welfare. Are you listening to me? And what many believers call the prosperity package of God is just welfare. They have not even entered what the Bible defines as prosperity. Prosperity is being so blessed. So blessed that you become a blessing to others. You must, in God's prosperity package, you must become a blessing to others. By virtue of what God has done in your life. I can tell you the truth. There are many rich people, but there are no prosperous people. Very few prosperous people, according to God's standards. So prosperity is being blessed to be a blessing. Being blessed to be a blessing. The second thing I want you to know about prosperity is that prosperity is not limited to financial resources. I cannot tell you this enough. Prosperity, biblical prosperity is not limited to financial blessings alone. This is where a lot of people get it wrong. Because many prosperity messages camp around finances and they stop there. 
the bible says in genesis 24 verse 1 the bible says and abraham was old and stricken in age it says and god had blessed him in all things all things say after me all things so prosperity is is your your excelling in every area of life spiritually financially hallelujah in your family when all around you is well with you the bible says god gave the, uh, the, the um, solomon was it solomon or david rest round about prosperity is not just limited to finance are you listening to me so I, I i need us to have a switch in mindset so that you when we talk about prosperity you don't just limit it the word prosperity means to prosper to prosper means to advance to move forward to excel to lead hallelujah this is the concept of prosperity that has not been understood in the church because everybody just says ah all they are claiming it and jumping and receiving it everything is just around themselves the man of god and himself or the church members and them and their ministry that's not prosperity that's welfare and that is no different from what the world is doing hallelujah say i'm prosperous say it i'm prosperous hallelujah praise the lord now i'll be sharing with you powerful principles obedience number one obedience is the gateway to a life of true prosperity obedience don't trivialize what i'm sharing don't trivialize it at all. Many of you will rejoice on the strength of this revelation many years to come. Obedience is the gateway. Obedience is the gateway to a world of wealth, prosperity, finance. Job 36 verse 11. Job 36 verse 11. Thank you Jesus. Job before Psalms. Job 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. This is God's word. If, if, that means you have a choice. He said if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. This is the immutable counsel of God. And I began by telling you, you cannot do anything against the truth, but for the truth. If ye obey and serve him. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man who feared the Lord, who delighted greatly in his commandments. Verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. This is where we get the concept of generational blessing. The Bible says the generation of the upright. You see true prosperity. True prosperity moves beyond you. Are you listening to me? True prosperity moves beyond you. It says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3 if you are there. One to read. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endureth forever this is to those who delight in obeying the commands of god he said first his seed shall be mighty so when you talk about copeland you hear the name copeland there is a generational blessing his seed shall be mighty hallelujah he says the generation of the upright will be blessed what our forefathers transferred to us in nigeria are all kinds of causes and all kinds of satanic things we woke up to meet a heritage of woes in nigeria and if we don't do something about it we'll pass it to our generation but god forbid in the name of jesus hallelujah it's a wealth and riches shall be in his house i love that scripture 
obedience 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 to the principles of god is what will guarantee i i tell you the truth listen to me please listen to me these are irrefutable principles they will never be broken according to the integrity of god listen the bible says god searched for a man who was greater than to swear by and finding no man god swore by himself that by these two immutable things it is impossible for god to lie he said my covenant will i not break nor alter the word that proceeds from my mouth god can be trusted it is on account of his integrity that we can have the confidence to obey his principles say amen, amen. so obedience There are many people who talk prosperity, who jump and claim prosperity, but are not ready to bear the responsibility of obedience. Let me tell you something. If you like, go to Oxford, Harvard, go to um, whatever you want to go. If you do not obey the principles of God, you will never get prosperity God's way. Hallelujah. You believe that you cannot do anything against the truth obedience say after me obedience obedience when i began to search for this thing i started saying lord you must open my eyes to the revelation of your word there's something that i need to know i don't want to give my generation a heritage of 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 poverty and weakness because it does not glorify god let me tell you straight to the point god is not glorified in your poverty write it and never forget it nobody will preach me into believing that god is glorified in any man's poverty you can accomplish more for the kingdom if you are blessed hallelujah there is a world dying out there and you can never help the poor by being one of them more families have been broken as a result of financial issues than the manifestation of demons and evil spirits there are many many children who cannot afford to go to school there are many families that cannot afford a meal you're not going to just talk and pamper them. It will take the manifestation of kingdom wealth and prosperity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I began to study this subject of prosperity. To find out what the Bible really teaches about this truth. Because there are all kinds of teachings. And now I've listened to different versions and varieties of the prosperity message hallelujah and i found an interesting scripture and this is where our journey will start tonight hallelujah isaiah 51 thank you jesus the lord is changing somebody this night forever forever and i mean it from the depths of my heart isaiah 51 isaiah 51 Are you there? Verse 2. It says, Look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. He said, Look unto Abraham. So God is saying, My portrait, my definition of what I call a prosperous person is Abraham. He said, Look unto Abraham thy father and unto sarah your mother he said i called him alone i blessed him and i increased him so tonight we'll look on to abraham abraham is the biblical portrait of god's idea of a blessed man are you listening to me not the rich people that you have read their books thank god for all of them but let me tell you something god's idea his portrait of a blessed man is in the person of abraham 
Isaiah 51 verse 2. I was shocked when I found this scripture. He said, look, there are only two people in the Bible as far as I know that the Bible says we should look up to. One is Abraham. Second, he said, looking up to Jesus. So he said, look up to Abraham. There is a message in the life of Abraham that, is, that needs to be gotten by the body of Christ. Look unto Abraham. He said, I called him alone. Look unto Abraham, your father. It says, and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and I blessed him and I increased him. We sing a lot of songs. Abraham's blessings are mine. And when Jesus began to talk to the Jews, because they claimed they knew Abraham and that the lineage of the Jewish nation started from Abraham. Let me show you something. John 8, quickly. John 8. Listen to an interesting statement that Jesus made to them. John 8, 39. The Jewish people were angry because they claimed that they were free. Are you there? Verse 39. And they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, what will happen? You would do the works of Abraham. Are you following me now? This is Jesus talking to the Jews. He's saying you people always claim Abraham is your father. But you are not doing what Abraham did. And in Isaiah 51, he said, look unto Abraham. There is something Abraham did that made me to present him as the portrait of the man that God has blessed. Look unto Abraham. So the foundation of true biblical prosperity is when you begin to study this man called Abraham. There are certain steps that Abraham took. There are certain things that he did. Are you following me now? And that if any believer, I don't care who you are, I don't care what's your level of education, listen, prosperity is not about business alone. It's not about job. All of those things come later. The foundation of prosperity is a proper understanding of God's word. I wish the graduates in Nigeria knew this truth. Are you listening to me? Biblical prosperity is not just opening a shop and let go. No, 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 no. Just keep all those things first. There is an understanding there is a foundation. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, that body, for I called him alone, and I blessed him, and I increased him. So let's examine the life of Abraham. Unfortunately, when many people begin to teach on the biblical prosperity message, they don't even talk about Abraham. They begin to talk about themselves and their shoes and their suit and so on and so forth. Bible says, look unto Abraham. So what can we find in the life of Abraham? Number one, the principle of tithing. Abraham was a tither. Genesis 14. Please write it. Irrefutable truths and foundations that can turn any man i don't care what the disadvantage is if god be god his word is true and you can stake him at his word number one is the principle of tithing the bible says in genesis 14 there's no time for us to to go there the bible says how that when abraham went to war to go and bring back his 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 brother Lot and all his goods and everything. The Bible says they spoiled the enemies that they went for war against. And the Bible says when Abraham came, he met a man called Melchizedek. And the Bible says Melchizedek was the priest of the Most High. And Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And the Bible says Abraham gave him a tithe. Of his spoils look unto abraham your father i'm giving you see god's prosperity package 
let me tell you the truth is not a mystery i'm demystifying it for you tonight it's not a mystery just like you go to school and you can know that you know some things you can get these principles say amen look unto your father abraham the first thing we see in the life of abraham is that abraham was a tither abraham was a tither so number one principle is tithing write your tithing what is your tithe a tithe is the tenth portion of your income a tenth portion of your increase proverbs 3 verse 9 and 10 honor the lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase verse 10 so shall thy bands be full and thy vats to overflowing the principle of tithing now many believers have been taught different concepts about tithing let me tell you something friends if you do not tithe you are scripturally entitled to a life of poverty scripturally if you do not i don't care what else you do i don't care whether you work in the presidency i assure you your prosperity will not last say after me tithing hmm. tithing is the key that opens the heavens that key that opens up the heavens and is the foundation for lasting abundance. Leviticus 27 verse 30. We're looking up to Abraham. Leviticus. I really want to finish this. Because the Lord is answering somebody's prayer point tonight. Prosperity is not just the issue of prayer and say, Lord, bring money. Tonight you will see that you will pray that prayer forever and you will not get an answer. Hallelujah. Hmm. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Are you there? And all the tithe of the land, whether of seed, whether of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. It is holy unto God. All the tithes. Say all. all. Not some. All the tithe of the land belongs to God. Your tithe is 10%. The Bible says it is holy. It's an instruction. It's an admonition. It's part of God's economic system. That for every true believer and everyone that cares to receive the package of God's blessings, your tithe. Is the number one there are many believers who do not tithe i know many prayer warriors who are poor and they are broke i know many people who are full of revelations i know all kinds of people let me tell you something friends your tithe opens the heavens malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12 he says, will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? That's the question. Will a man rob God? And there are many robbers of God in the church. Many pastors, members, sincere people, but robbers of God. He said, will a man rob God? He said, yet ye have robbed me. And they say, wherein have we robbed you? He said, in tithes and offerings. Listen, he said, you are cursed. Can I tell you something? This is not the cause of the law. Hello? This is not the cause of the law. This is the cause that comes as a direct result. The word cause there means woe. I tell you sincerely, if you, if you are not a faithful tither, the hardship of your life have not started yet. Show me a man who has all the blessings in the world and is not a faithful tither. I don't envy his blessings. Hallelujah. The recession brought a lot of arrogant economic theories to their knees. 
and prove that only they that stand with the Lord will last forever. Do you believe that? Till tomorrow we are still speaking about Abraham. Listen, Israel, the biological son of Abraham, has become a nation today, the nation Israel. The nation Israel is still a prosperous nation today. A nation that is on deserts, they farm on rocks, yet they are exporting food. Are you listening to me? Surrounded by every atmosphere of hostility, but they are still standing strong. As a Jewish nation, dispersed for many years, and they came back together and they still understood their language. The best students in Harvard today are Jewish students. The very best. The best of business owners in America today are Jewish people. Because he says, blessed is the man that fears God. His seed shall be mighty. Are you listening to me? Today, people troop to Israel again and again to go for pilgrimage. But he said, if you claim Abraham is your father, then do what Abraham did. Otherwise, you are a hypocrite. Are you following me now? So, number one principle is what? Tithing. The Bible says in verse 10, bring ye all the tithes. Say after me, all the tithes. Bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat in my house. He said, and prove me, test me, commit my integrity, said the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and shower upon you a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cut its young before its time. He said, you will be called blessed and you will be a delight some land. Seven prophetic blessings that follow Titus. I called Abraham alone, naive, taught him certain principles and I produced a wonder, a portrait of a prosperous man. Say after me, I receive grace to tithe. Listen, Tithing, tithing is the foundation of your prosperity. Are you listening to me? Many people give all kinds of excuses. Ah, my parents gave their tithe in their salary. Oh, our pastor said this and that. Any man that teaches you not to tithe, even if he loves you, is wrecking your financial destiny. I say it again and I will repeat it. Any man, I don't care who, who teaches you that you should not tithe and just says one day things will work for you except this scripture can be broken. And the Bible says you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Any man who is not a faithful tither is doomed to fail in his finances. Prosperity will be far from you, I assure you. Did you know that even secular people who are not born again practice the principle of tithing? They may not call it tithing, but 10% of many corporations today that are some of the leading corporations, 10% and even more are given. They ignite this principle. Look unto Abraham. Say, I receive grace to be a tither. See, tonight there are many of you that it is, there is no devil stopping you from your prosperity. It's your greed. And Satan keeps deceiving you and makes you think if you give or if you give your tithe, how much do you have? And you say, one day when I start working. The problem is this. It is your tithing that brings you into blessings. Hallelujah. Abraham gave a tithe. Number two, Abraham was a sacrificial giver. Your giving. Your giving. Abraham was a giver. Genesis 18 verse 1 to 8. Write it. We don't have time to read it. But the Bible makes us to understand that Abraham was just sitting down taking fresh air outside. Suddenly he saw three people coming. He didn't even bother to find out whether they came to kill him or not. The Bible says he ran to meet them. And he told them, he said, you are welcome. You are welcome to my house. Come and sit down. He, he said they gave them water to wash their feet. He ran immediately and went and caught a lamb. He told his wife, get flour. Prepare food for these people. And the Bible says, a liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that waters shall himself be watered. 
Proverbs 11 verse 24 and 25. A liberal soul shall be made fat. There are many greedy and stingy people in the church. And they will never ever, never break that barrier of poverty. Be educated, get PhD, get masters, go to Harvard, go. If you are not a giver, forget about prosperity. Are you getting blessed tonight? Your giving is tied to the principle of sowing and reaping. Genesis 8.22 The Bible says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, summer and winter, cold and heat, day and night shall not cease as long as the earth remains. That means this principle is in motion. If you do not sow anything, brothers and sisters, let me tell you the sincere truth. You will not receive anything. Agriculture teaches us that, correct? Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Give and it shall be given unto you. Don't give and it shall not be given unto you. Period and full stop. Don't give. And it shall not be given unto you. The Bible says good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. He said for with the same measure you give. Don't let anybody deceive you that the size of your seed does not matter. Agriculture teaches us more than that. The Bible says he that soweth sparingly. 2 Corinthians 9. Shall reap sparingly he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully the bible says let every man according as he has purposed in his heart give cheerfully and not grudgingly for god loves a cheerful giver the next verse says and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work He said, he which gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. That means out of every resource that comes, there is bread and there is seed. Hallelujah. If you sow your bread, you are not wise. If you eat your seed, you are not wise. For everything God gives you, there is bread and there is seed. Many people eat everything. Once you get it, it's going to your mouth straight. Whose God is their belly? Are you learning something tonight? Say I'm a giver. Break the shackles of greed in your life. And I'm telling you, you will step. I don't care who you know. Or Paul said, no, we know man after the flesh. This is not an issue of connection. I know this, I know that. that that's not the issue. For Jeremiah 1 verse 12 says, God is alert and active. Watching over his word to perform it. And if God be God, then his word cannot be broken. irrefutable principles your tithing number two your giving hmm. so we see that abraham was a giver genesis 1 18 verse 1 to 8 and the bible says in proverbs 11 verse 24 and 25 a liberal soul shall be made fat hallelujah i told you according to genesis 24 verse 1 that prosperity is not just limited to finances the bible says god bless abraham in all things all things hallelujah prosperity this has been our secret as individuals and as a ministry listen I learned this from Bishop David Oedipo some years ago he shared a powerful principle he said in 1987 the Lord told him that he has started prospering as a person but his ministry let me tell you something and this is what preachers miss. Do you know, if I am prosperous as a preacher, all right, and if you are prosperous as a preacher, and the members of your ministry are not prosperous, the yoke will kill you. Are you listening to me? There are many preachers who are prosperous, but they are not teaching their members, and so they are dying alone. Praise the Lord. 
and he said the lord told him he said he was meditating and the lord told him he said do you realize that abraham did not go to battle alone correct he went with some people so that spoil was not just for him alone so when he came and he gave the tithe he gave the tithe on behalf of other people too i told him that's the secret of corporate growth are you listening to me and from the very first day by the grace of god that koinonia started we don't owe god as a ministry one naira in tithe this is the secret behind the blessing it's not a mystery are you listening to me it's not some mystery some some magic no There are ministries that don't tithe. They don't care. They've been there for 10 years, 20 years. No improvement, no growth. And they give all kinds of lousy excuses. They've tried all kinds of economic theories. The secret is tithing. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Well, whether you believe it or not, one day you will believe it. Certainly. Everybody in hell is a believer. The only issue is that they believe too late. The key to open heavens over a ministry, over any organization, I don't care what it is, tight. Say after me, tight. If you don't, there is no future. There is no future for any financial future, prosperity future, for any ministry or any organization that is not faithful in tithing. And let me tell you, the secret of getting the blessings of tithing is consistency. Write it. Many of you tithe, but you are not consistent. You do it once in a while. One day when there is a spiritual, emotional high, then you get, no. Consistent tithing. Consistent tithing. The Bible says, and if the cloud be full of rain, they will empty themselves. Thank you, Jesus. Giving is the key to increase. Giving is the key to continuous blessings. Shall men give? Shall men give? Not shall angels give your prosperity. I don't believe in what they call wealth creation. There's nothing called wealth creation. I believe in wealth transfer. There's no new money that has fallen from anywhere. It's only been transferred from one geographical location to the other. Shall men give? I hear a lot of people, our, our scripture, we like that scripture. Oh, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Massive wealth transfer is coming. Hold on. Hold on. I've read it too. But let me shock you. Because according to God's wealth transfer plan, some believers are also going to be victims. The Bible says the man with one talent, they collected it from him. He was part of the three. And they gave the man who had five. Oh, we are talking it. Talking. <laughs> Let me tell you, before you talk it, make sure that all the principles are there. Otherwise, you will talk yourself to frustration. I assure you. I assure you. We've examined the word of faith already. I don't need to go back into it. Are you listening to me? Obedience. Deuteronomy 18 verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all that I command thee this day that the Lord will set thee above on high and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. It shall come to pass if you hearken to his voice and you obey no matter who you are. See, God is not a respecter of men but is a respecter of his word. The Bible says he exalts his word even above his name. Hallelujah. So your tithing and your giving. Your giving is the same as your sowing. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully. So we see sowing there. He said, every man as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give. So he links sowing to giving and receiving to harvest. 
And the Bible says, as far as the earth remains, seed time. See, when you see certain people make some statements, it's not because they are, they are talkatives. It's because they have taken God by his word. And on account of the integrity of God, they can beat their chest. Paul said, I know whom I have believed. He's not a stranger to me. I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed. I want you to leave here tonight with a depth of persuasion. Hallelujah. Now, God's, God's economic system works on what we call a reward system. A reward system. That means when you adhere to his principles, there are channels through which God will honor his word back to your life. There are many titers, there are many givers, but they do not know how the return channels of God. They don't know how these blessings of God comes and manifests physically and that's what I want to teach you tonight. The concept of kingdom wealth and prosperity is not so complicated. It's just that many hear but very few obey. Obedience is not a little issue. Many people see obedience as small children's talk. As you rise higher in the spirit, you find out that obedience is a symbol of true spiritual maturity. The Bible says when you are young, you are allowed to go wherever you want to go. But as you become matured, someone will hold your hands. That's a sign that you are matured. So God's economic system works on what I call a reward system. Say after me, a reward system. That means, if I'm faithful in tithing, and I'm faithful in giving, how do these spiritual realities begin to translate and manifest into my life? Number one, the doorways, you can write, doorways to the physical manifestation of wealth and prosperity. After you have obeyed in consistent tithing, after you are faithful in sacrificial giving, not based on emotions, based on revelation. These are the things to expect. This is how God opens up these doors. Number one, divine favor. Divine favor. Psalm 44 verse 3, divine favor. Please, let's hurry up quickly. Psalm 44. Anybody there? Doorways to the physical manifestation of these blessings. Psalm 44 verse 3. He said, for they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hadst favor upon them. So when you become a faithful tighter, when you become a committed and ardent sacrificial giver, the first thing that begins to happen in your life is undeniable favor. These are gateways to the manifestation. The Bible says, and Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with man. Hallelujah. And I hope you know that Jesus was a giver. Jesus was a faithful giver. John 13 verse 27 to 29. The Bible says that when Jesus was at table with the disciples... He told Judas, he said, that which you would do, do it quickly. Hallelujah. And Judas got up and the people were confused. And it was one of two things. They said either he was going to go and prepare the place for feast or to give to the poor. That means it was, Jesus was a giver. He was such a giver that he gave himself. Hallelujah. Jesus was such a giver that he didn't just give of his substance. He gave himself. Hallelujah. So divine favor. Psalm 102 verse 13. Look at it quickly. 102 verse 13. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. Next verse. Exodus 12 36. 
Pure Bible studies tonight. Exodus 12, 36. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they gave unto them such things as they required, and they despoiled the Egyptians. He said the Lord gave what? Favor. And as a result, the Egyptians got what they required. So, if you are faithful, I'm telling you how God's economic system works. When you are faithful in tithing, you are faithful in giving, suddenly you begin to see a manifestation of consistent favor. I'm not talking of once in three years. Once in consistent favor. Consistent favor. Hallelujah. Leviticus 26 verse 9. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Shadow Bakura Oh, I have a glorious future. I'm confident. Confident. See, when you know something, you know it. You know it. Nobody can take it away from you. Knowledge is an asset. Hallelujah. My greatest asset is the word of God. Verse 9. I found this scripture and it shocked me. Leviticus 26 verse 9. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. He said for I will have respect. That's another word for favor. Some versions say I will favor you. He said I will have respect for you. I will multiply. So that's favor with God and favor with men. The Bible says Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. Say, I have favor. In the name of Jesus. Number two. Wisdom. 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 Proverbs 8. Many people do not know the power of wisdom. Wisdom is not common sense. It's not common Wisdom. Proverbs 8. Are you receiving something tonight? Proverbs 8. Mm. I tell you, somebody is changing in this place. I know it. I know it by the Spirit. Many of you, you will write some of these things and generations, you will literally liberate your lineage and bring a new story to your heritage. I believe this in the name of Jesus. I truly believe this. You may be in the crowd. Some of you may be outside. Nobody is seeing you. But this word, there is a spirit of the word that will enter you and distinguish you. 14. This is wisdom speaking. He said, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. He said, by me, kings reign kings don't reign by talking and stories and jargons they reign by wisdom those who are ahead in life reign by wisdom this is not an issue of age this is not an issue of status when the wisdom of god mantles you you will do wonders no matter how young you are i tell you you will do things that will shock people men will look at you you are operating from a frequency that is not known to man job said there is a part where no foul knoweth the eyes of the vulture has not seen doth not wisdom cry this is not knowledge this is not head knowledge it's not sophia it's a higher plane of existence when the heavens are open over you you become an unending wonder men sit down and say from they looked at jesus they said what wisdom if men do not talk about your wisdom then you are just a talkative uncommon wisdom is a mark of god upon a man and you cannot you cannot equate the man and the wisdom that comes from him there is a higher force at work in his life wisdom i listened to pat robinson years ago and i cried and i vowed that that would be my prayer 
he said when he was young and about to start ministry he prayed three prayer points he said lord give me wisdom lord give me favor and give me your anointing i said that's right the bible says follow them who through faith and i began to pray i said lord give me wisdom give me favor and god gave solomon wisdom and with that wisdom he became a wonder and the queen of sheba came and said i've not even seen half of what was told see let me tell you the world is about to be amazed at the dimension of wisdom that obedient believers will walk in wisdom proverbs 4 from verse 5 to 9 kapala kataya I know it when the, the, the word is entering somebody's spirit. I tell you, I know it when the word is entering. The, there are some, not everybody, not everybody. I know there are some of you just looking. It's a nice service. But there are some people that say, Lord, this is it. I've been praying. This is it tonight. I lay hold on to sound wisdom. And I change my destiny forever. Proverbs 4 from verse 5. Get wisdom get understanding forget it not neither decline from the words of my mouth forsake her not and she shall preserve thee love her and she will keep thee seven read it together one to read this is the wisest man that ever lived speaking he said wisdom i've tested this as a king i've tested it in my life and this is my verdict wisdom is the principal thing he said, therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Listen to the blessings. Eight. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. Wisdom will bring you to honor. If you value wisdom, it will bring you to honor. I'm telling you, money cannot give you honor. Money cannot give you honor. Honor is bigger than the realm of money. It's wisdom that brings men to honor. When thou dost embrace her, she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver unto thee wisdom when you are faithful in tithing you are faithful in giving god begins to give you wisdom creative wisdom creative wisdom he said by me kings reign this ministry today by the grace of God is carried out not by experience. How old are we? It's called wisdom. It's not Sophia. It's not the wisdom of the world. It's a higher level and order of wisdom. Do you believe this tonight? Number three, divine ideas. Divine ideas. Divine ideas. Divine ideas. God showed me a mystery that opened my eyes. Divine ideas. Insight. Innovation. Job 32 verse 8. He said, but there is a spirit that resides in a man. And the inspiration when the Holy Ghost inspires you, he will make you of understanding. Isaiah 45 from verse 1 and 3, he says, And I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. 48 verse 17 says, I am the Lord thy God who teacheth thy hands to profit. divine ideas listen to what the lord told me he said bring ye all the tithes please listen he says and prove me now here with if i will not open what the windows of heaven and i began to use google to search all the verses that have to do with the windows of heaven and i got a shocking revelation because i found out that in genesis 26 or Genesis 7, verse 11 and 12, the Bible says, in the days of Noah, it says, and God opened the windows of heaven, and what came out was rain. 
he says and i will open the windows of heaven and shower upon you a blessing but he said that blessing will come and there will be no room enough for it what a mystery a blessing no room to contain that blessing that means that blessing is not money it's not materials hallelujah ideas then i listened to aura roberts and he said it's called ideas concepts insight innovation every time god is ready to bless his people there is a sudden release of the inspiration of the holy ghost the race is not to the swift the battle is not to the strong insight are you listening to me men have changed their lives insights we are looking up to abraham the bible makes us to understand that when abraham left he didn't have much but god gave him insight in jewish days most agriculturists were nomads all right they moved from one place to the other suddenly god gave abraham insight and what happened instead of roaming around with his cattle he dug a well so that the cattle had a stable place insight ideas the bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water every other plant receives rain from above but there is a level of understanding that takes you to the stream so you don't depend on the rain above insight insight in genesis 26 verse 17 to 22 the story of isaac because the bible speaking about abraham said that god knew that abraham would teach his sons to walk in the ways of the lord so i believe isaac was a tither and he enjoyed some of these blessings the bible says he also dug wells just like his father and he increased in cattle he increased in everything and when there was a time of famine in genesis 26 other people were running away but isaac sowed in that same land and received that same year an hundredfold the bible says and god prospered him the man walked strong he moved forward and the philistines envied him hallelujah insight so the rain talks about the holy spirit until the spirit be poured upon us from on high isaiah 32 verse 15 then the wilderness will be turned into a fruitful vine and the fruitful vine be turned into a forest hallelujah inside jacob and laban in genesis 30 verse 25 to 43 genesis 30 verse 25 to 43 the bible talks about jacob and laban after working for 14 good years for two wives the bible says laban had walked jacob out he was taking care of laban's cattle and because the favor of the lord was with him his cattle increased and when he was about to go what happened laban said come by experience i have known that god has blessed me for thy sake by experience i've seen it in my cattle that god has blessed me for thy sake he said remain with me and he said here's the deal all of the goats and the sheep that are spotted they are for me they were very few the ones that are not spotted they are for you suddenly divine insight came upon him and the bible says by the riverside i'm still studying that technology till tomorrow how he took polar trees and kept them and then the animals came and they were mating looking at the polar trees and all the children that they gave birth to had spots can you imagine that level of insight suddenly laban found out that his animals were not giving birth to white sheep and goat again they were all spotted say after me divine insight hmm. Uzziah in the Bible second Chronicles 26 verse 5 to 15 was an amazing king the Bible says he walked in the way of Zacharias and as long as he sought God God prospered him and then the Bible says insight came to him the Bible says he built towers in the valleys he built towers above hallelujah and the bible says he built engines he built machines he stationed his army in a certain pattern that nobody could break through when you read about Zaya, you will see that he was a giver in the house of god he was a titan 
so when you give you receive divine inspiration hallelujah one great man i respect so much peter j daniels he's worth above five billion us dollars never went to school never saw a wall of a university hallelujah he just got up all he had was the bible at age 26 he was a complete failure but today he's a blessing to the world all over because he found these truths in god's word and applied them he's a minister and he has changed the face of humanity because an idea came upon him our fathers have told us of how certain insights and ideas came to them and changed their story forever i pray that as you are faithful in tithing and giving i pray i pray that the god of all flesh who can pick a man irrespective of his lineage and distinguish him i pray that the god of all grace will show you something will show you something that your eyes will see that generations will bless you forever i pray in the name that is above all names that god that while men are looking you will see while men are looking you will see hallelujah and he told lot he said look at the field anywhere you want and all lot was looking but he could not see green pastures all he saw was sodom and he seemed to have picked the choicest land immediately he saw that it turned the bible says god told abraham now lift up your eyes and see he didn't say look and see when god tells you to see you will see things that no man saw when he was about to kill isaac there was no ram all the while that ram had been there but his eyes could not see the bible says suddenly he said look this is a ram hallelujah he said two men were going to emmaus and they could not see jesus was with them but they could not see in between the lines they were walking with him but they did not see the bible says and when he broke bread their eyes were opened may god open your eyes i prophesy may god open your eyes let my god open your eyes i pray that as you sleep in the night by visions by dreams i pray that the lord will show you something in the name of the lord jesus i read about a man who kept diligently tithing and and giving nothing was working in his life one night he slept and he just saw an equation and he saw a drawing and he happened to be very good in drawing he got up and he just drew it and in the dream they told him they said that is a solution that will be relevant in optics he went to a popular hospital he said please he wants to see the consultants and he met them he said i saw this in my dream and i want you to go through it true life story the consultant looked at it and he was shocked he said where did you see this he said in my dream what does it mean please he called other consultants and they came together and they looked at it they had a meeting and they called the man they said you don't know what you have discovered we have done everything we know to do instantly they gave him a check of 20 million us dollars he was interviewed in, in in supernatural the race is not to the sweep there are keys you don't have them you don't have them period and full stop divine insight i pray all the time i say lord grant me insight i don't want to live a foolish life i don't want to struggle for nothing open my eyes oh god and show me where you hid these treasures kenneth copeland six years six years before his breakthrough one of the wealthiest ministers of the gospel hallelujah he sat down was suffering could not bless his generation and he found this truth with his wife was in debt of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and he began to take this word seriously suddenly the lord led him to buy a large plot of land and they found out that there was an oil well under it I, I pray i pray i pray brothers and sisters i pray for you some of you would think you are so young but i pray for you i pray for you i pray for you people have changed history out of the depth of revelation i pray that your eyes will see something i pray that your eyes will see something 
innovation. People will mock you now. Hold on. The end of all contention is results. For you cannot do anything against the truth, but for the truth. Insight. Insight. God will lead you. God will lead you. He will show you things. Hallelujah. I was told about someone in Kaduna. He was walking and praying and asking God to change his story. Suddenly he looked and he saw a vast plot of land somewhere. And the Lord told him to write a proposal and take it, I think, to Coca-Cola or so. And that guy just got up and went to Coca-Cola. He went and met the owner of the land. He said, will you sell this land if we we'll buy it? They said, you're a small boy, get out of here. He said, no, will you sell it? He said, well, if we, we give us a good price. And he went and met Coca-Cola with a proposal. He said, we notice your trucks don't have a place for parking. I've gotten a nice place that I think you would like to look at. Say after me, inside. And suddenly they saw it and they said, okay, we would like to get the place. And he went and met the people. He said, I found somebody. And I just stand as a middleman and he changed his life forever. People's stories are changing every day. Those who are practicing the word. See, prosperity gives you focus to serve God. Prosperity gives you focus. One of the blessings of prosperity is the ability to focus. You don't want to get up and have children and be running. You will never serve God and live your destiny. See, this chase after money, money, money. You will never be able to serve God if all you are doing all through your life is chasing after money. Is that correct? But that's what that's the deceit Satan has put on many people. Day and night, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. What are you doing? We are trying to make ends meet. Why don't you stay with the word? It's better to suffer now. It's better to suffer now. Are you hearing me? It's better to suffer now. You are not married. Some of you, you don't have children. It's better to pay the price now. Men will laugh at you. They will mock you. But you just hold on. When the word begins to speak, not even you can stop it. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. Matthew 17 verse 27. There was need to pay tax to Caesar. And they came and they were harassing the apostles. They were with Jesus. Suddenly Jesus had a divine innovation. And he told Peter. He said Peter. Go to the sea. Go and catch a fish. Open the mouth of that fish and remove a coin. I pray that God will lead somebody. God will tell you go somewhere. Catch a fish. There is gold in the mouth of that fish. You have been seeing an ordinary fish. But let the Lord open your eyes. He looked at the wife of the sons of the prophet. He said you have a little cruise of oil in your house. You call it nothing. But let the Lord open your eyes. For that oil can multiply. And it can feed you and your generations forever. Irrefutable laws. They will work for anybody. God is no respecter of persons. He may come with a momentary sacrifice. But let me tell you, stand to it. This is another balance of the prosperity gospel. They just tell you, if you are doing it, it must happen now. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. It's not the time to give up. Stand strong and see the word of the Lord in your life. Hallelujah. Finally, the channels, the works of your hands. The works of your hands. Job chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. The Bible says that when the sons of God came together, Job was with them. And what happened? Job began to, Satan began to speak about Job. And the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? This was Satan testifying. See, let me tell you something. I read a book by Papa Akpami and he said some battles. The name of the book is Battles Satan Cannot Win. When I read that book, it changed my life. It was a gift that he gave me. The only way Satan can stop your harvest is to stop your sowing. Satan does not need to be absent for you to be blessed. All this Satan go away. No, no, no. Let him stay and be a witness. Because he was a witness to Job's prosperity. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? And Satan said, Have you not blessed the works of his hands? And or have you not blessed? Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. 
this negates that gospel of laziness lazy a lazy man will never be prosperous say it there are many lazy seed givers tongue talkers but they are lazy the bible says whatever your hands find to do do it many people are lazy the bible says god will bless the works of your hands this is where i teach certain other laws if you followed our message kingdom wealth summit the law of value develop yourself the works of your hands how does god bless the works of your hands in three ways number one he gives you passion passion that's how god bless the work of your hands he gives you passion number two he gives you access to quality information access to quality information hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 my people perish because of lack of knowledge many people suffer because they lack information quality information that is able to cause you to excel and to lead in whatever area to be the best i told myself i'll be the best in whatever i'm called to do Number three, he gives you the spirit of excellence. That's how God blesses the works of your hands. So I'm demystifying it so that you don't just think some ghost comes from somewhere and see. No, no. There are three ways. We're not in a business class, so this is just ministry. There's no point going into in-depth to expound it. But God blesses the works of your hands in three ways. Number one, he gives you passion. Anything you are not passionate about, you will not prosper in it. Period and full stop. The best in everything are those who are passionate there. Hallelujah. Number two, he gives you access to information. There are many of us that what you need is information. Every time I am aware of, I know that if I can get more information that I have now, I will not be where I am. Therefore, I'm consistently opening up my spirit for information. Many of you don't read books. You see that this is where the place of diligence comes leadership the word leadership is from the word lead leadership is not a position leadership is influence that is gotten by commanding results hallelujah many of us are not diligent you don't read any books on finance you don't read any book on biblical prosperity you say it doesn't matter let me tell you something that god well we are still talking about other gospels but that gospel that tells you just sit down and serve god one day god will see your diligence and bless you let me assure you you will never prosper that way because my father and mother are passionate people about god my mother was a pastor's daughter I know my, I, I pray sometimes for half of the passion my mother has for God. It didn't change my family's financial story. Are you listening to me? Many of your parents are pastors in ministry. They have been in ministry for decades. They have given everything they have, but they are still suffering. That tells you there is a law you must find out. Don't ever think your spirituality will cover up for lack of understanding of god's word if you have been hoping that one day god will see my faithfulness and change my story let me tell you before time you are in for a root shock there is something called the justice of god his ability to bless those who are disciplined and diligent enough to work with his principles hallelujah round up the works of your hands these are the channels four ways how did god teach me this he says and from the east of eden came out one river and it parted itself into four one river out of eden parted itself into four and in one of the rivers there was gold and he said the gold is very good i'll never be poor in my life never my generation will call me blessed the blessings upon my life will bring a harvest of many to the kingdom nations will be transformed this I believe prosperity is being a blessing it's not about gathering cars gathering houses that's a lopsided definition of prosperity prosperity is not what you have is measured by how much you have given to bless mankind 
a prosperous man i do not envy you i don't care how much you have i want to know how many people have been blessed that's the measure of true biblical prosperity that's why there are many people i don't envy their wealth till i die they don't bless anybody with their prosperity they sit down and all they want is just to flaunt themselves and say oh i have cars i have houses that that's sorrow there if i never drive a car in my life hallelujah and you become blessed i'm a prosperous person that's the biblical definition of prosperity not about how many cars how many this i'm telling you this get that correct definition right now because there is there are wrong prosperity teachings out there and everybody's my car my house my this my that my all testimonies is just i i look forward to times when somebody will come and say ah i capro ministry said they had a need of 15 million naira and the spirit of god spoke to me and i signed it because of that they have sent missionaries to congo they have sent missionaries that's the kind of testimony who stand up and clap don't come and tell us i stood and i just built a nice house uh -huh. and how is the world blessed by that story prosperity i pray every time and i say lord bless me already in my journals I've, I've i've written a comprehensive list of evangelical ministries that will send children that will go to school because we are blessed families that will be changed we're talking about building estates and giving it to people we're talking about rescuing nations not yourself and your wife and your children if you don't believe this God will search your heart and see it. This is biblical prosperity. I believe it. I know that if I refuse to pay the price today, a nation will suffer. I will never stand my child looking at me in the face and say, Daddy, why did you not believe God when others were believing? Many of you have had to look at your parents and they say, this guy was my classmate. You say, really? What happened? You didn't believe what he was believing. I will let God be proud of me. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you my best lord for your glory is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you hallelujah there are other benefits that are not financial that come in when you obey god's word divine health protection longevity longevity psalms 41 verse 1 to 3 we're out of time but i want you to pay the price this night and and listen let me finish this series this could be the best gift you have had this year psalms 41 verse 1 to 3 blessed is he that considereth the poor the lord will deliver him in time of trouble the lord will preserve him and keep him alive and he shall be blessed upon the earth and thou shalt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies look at this powerful scripture verse 3 the lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing thou will make all his bed in sickness i the lord will be merciful unto him heal my soul for for i've sinned against you okay so that you just read that to verse 3 and then you stop there number 2 psalm 20 verse 1 to 3 psalm 20 verse 1 to 3 powerful prayer this has become my prayer see many of you lack the keys that you need see on the strength of revelation you can write gloriously in life 20 the lord hear thee in the day of trouble the name of the god of jacob defend thee send thee help from his sanctuary and strengthen thee out of zion remember all thy offerings and accept thy bond sacrifice the lord hear thee send thee help from his sanctuary 
Many of you will need to go to your loved ones and go and give and go and give them some of these scriptures. Job 22. Job 22. Let's finish up. We'll soon round up. Job 22. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 23. I'll read it whether or not you are there. Verse 23. I'm going to show you one powerful mystery that I found. I shouted when I found it. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, and thou shalt put away iniquity very far from thy tent. He said, Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. He said, Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Listen, and then thou shalt have thy delight in the Almighty, and thou shalt lift up thy face unto God. He said, Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. 28. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and thy light shall shine upon thy ways. Listen, 29. When men say there is a casting down, then thou shalt say there is a lifting up, and it shall save the humble person. Listen, listen. Look at verse 30. Dangerous scripture. Does anybody have any other version aside from King James? Please, anybody, quickly. Verse 30. Is there anybody there? Listen. He said what? Even sinners will be rescued. <sighs> Dangerous mystery. That on account of your practicing the word, you can shield people who are not even believers. He said even sinners. So my loved ones who are not obeying the word of God. I can stand and there is a key in the spirit I can ignite. And stand and speak. He said even sinners will be rescued. When you find it. He said your heart will be glad. When you find it. He said I will give you the keys of the kingdom. That's the prayer I pray for, for this house every time. I say, Lord, there are some people here who are not born again. There are some people here who are not faithful in tithing. But by this scripture, oh God, I pray that you cover for them until the revelation hits them. That's why you see some people who are not faithful in the word of God, but they are still getting blessed. Talk about intercession with knowledge. Isaiah 65, 20 to 24. Isaiah 65, 20 to 24. Ah, my spirit is boiling. If only one person can catch this thing this night, I'm happy. Don't just be emotional about it. Don't just be emotional. Many of you are hearing what some families are praying about and saying, Lord, change our story. It's not an impartation. It's light. Many people are saying, oh God, we want to start a new business. That's not the issue. Hmm. Verse 20. There shall be no more in it infant of days. These are the blessings for tithing and giving. Nor an old man that has not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old. But the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. Listen, 21. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat of the fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of the tree, they are the days of my people. And my elect will long enjoy the works of their hands. 23. Thou shalt not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. He said, for they are the seed of the blessed and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. You cannot do anything against the truth, but for the truth. Hallelujah. Divine health, protection, longevity. These are blessings that follow people who are faithful. Are you seeing that prosperity is not just about money? Look at what a lot of people have been missing. So, every time you hear people make certain audacious statements, there is a revelation they are standing upon. You will only criticize if you don't know what they know. Knowledge intoxicates. Finally, I want to round up with something. Just two minutes and I'll be done. 
I have to address this issue. We are talking about um, the gospel of prosperity. Hallelujah. The concept of giving to your man of God or what we know as prophet's offering. I need to put, I need to teach on this for the next one minute and put a balance quickly. What is the concept of prophet's offering? And the concept of giving to over the man of God. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 8 to 17, 2 Kings. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Kings 4. Oh, I wish we had so much time. Second Kings 4 from verse 8. Hallelujah. The Bible says there was a woman, she was a Shunammite woman. Hallelujah. And that every time Elijah passed to Shunem, please listen, that the woman saw him. She was a great woman. The Bible says she constrained him to eat bread. And every time he passed, she called him. Elijah, Elisha was a man of God. Every time he passed, the woman saw him. She said, I perceive that this is a man of God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says she built a place for him. First, she was giving him bread. And then she built a place for him. Listen, please, carefully. When she built a place for him, she put candles, something for him to write. Prophets were writers or men of God of those days. It applies now to everybody. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that it came to pass when this woman was doing all of the things that he was doing the bible says verse 12 and he said to gehazi his servant call this shunammite that means the man had been touched by her generosity first she perceived that he was a man of god can i tell you something okay well i'll i'll, I'll say that a little later he said and she stood before him. Listen, 13. And he said unto her, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast shown care for us with all this care. What is it that will be done for thee? He said, Would thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. Look up. Every true servant of God does not depend on the finance of his congregation. This guy was an influential man. He said, should we talk to the government for you? Are you listening to me? Elisha was not a poor man. Every man of God that depends on his members for his welfare. God sent me to be a blessing, not to be a burden. Many men of God have, have put their, 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 their members in, in all kinds of burden and yoke as if they are the ones who called him. Go and meet the person who called you into ministry. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? hallelujah however the bible says the woman did what she gave him bread and she built a place for him as a result what happened to summarize the story he found out he looked at her life and found out that there was something she could not she did not have and he said according to the time of life are you listening to me in second Kings 17 verse 9 first kings 17 verse 9 to 16 the story of the widow in Zarephath when the brook cherith had dried God sent Elijah interestingly God said dear I have commanded a widow to feed thee but we do not see any record of the woman being aware that Elisha was coming but God said I have commanded her look at look at a very wicked prophet for heaven's sake when he just got there look at what Elisha said I mean, when, uh, Elijah, sorry. When he went there, he said, Madam, please bring me water. As if he was, he was not aware that there was famine. Are you listening to me? He said, bring me water. And as the woman said, okay. He said, as you are coming, please add bread and oil. The woman said, Haba. Sorry, sir. I know you're a man of God, but are you blind? I'm about to eat the last one and die. He said, eh, just go and bring it first. I want to prophesy. Go and bring it. And he says, as surely as the Lord lives, that flower will not run dry. The Bible says, and they ate from it many days. Can I tell you something? Listen, when you give to a, the, a man of God that God has placed over you, you are not trying to help him financially. Your giving is not donation. 
many people are you seeing the balance now because there are many believers who like it they say hey we thank god koinonia we don't give nobody puts any pressure you are going to be poor there is a blessing listen listen when god places men of god over your life their function is four i must teach you this tonight number one to open your eyes to the revelation of the word number two to supply spiritual guidance and direction number three to correct and instruct you in the way of the lord the bible says to correct you in righteousness number four to speak over your life hallelujah when god puts a man of god over your life who is effective are you listening to me one way that you step into cheap blessing is to learn to sow into their lives now you know by God's grace that we are blessed. So don't you think I'm trying to manipulate you to get your money? No. If I depend on koinonia for my well-being, it means I will die. Because I have to tie myself to the obedience of all of you. What if God tells you, Aaron, to bless me? And you have to think about it for one, for one month. I'll be suffering for one month till you finally tell God, yes. Every man of God is blessed by his own giving life. Not the members. It is my giving and adherence to God's principle that blesses me many of you have been robbed of the opportunity are you listening to me i will teach you this because it's truth many of you do not care about the ministers many of you don't care about us when i say care i'm not talking about giving oh we, we have we have learned to see the faithfulness of god but i'm saying that you are robbing yourself i tell you sincerely under god if you give to me you don't make me richer You create a platform for yourself to rise not because my name is joshua selman but because of the office that i occupy by grace and the prophet looked and the bible says he told i said according to the time of life this one that you do not have the lord led bishop oyedeko and he met kenneth copeland and gave him a seed and he spoke over his life and changed his story forever Many of you do not value the balance is no man of God. And as surely as the Lord lives till Jesus come, you will never hear of a time in E and I by the grace of God Almighty where we we'll have to stand up and say, oh yeah, uh, um, um, uh, please, if you, don't give, if you don't give to me, I will die. Oh, let God be true and let all men be liars. That God is more than enough. Are you listening to me could it be that there are see let me tell you something friends i need to tell you something the first thing the shunammite woman saw is that she perceived that he was a man of god see the man that god has sent over your life are you listening to me whether he's younger than you or older than you when it comes to his office he's not your friend are you listening to me many of you do not know the difference the woman first mike mudok defines wisdom as the ability to recognize difference she perceived that he was a man of god i've met ministers younger than me i've met ministers less experienced than i am but when i perceive that there is grace for that time period i take away every informality and I know that there is grace that they carry the reason why many of you have never been blessed is you don't know the difference between I'm not, I'm not teaching all this manipulation and servitude but I will not deceive you many of you the day you begin to see the difference something will change in your life hallelujah I'm not talking of man of men of God that ah let me do this please climb upon my head and move that's witchcraft hallelujah but that any time you are in a place god sends men who are teaching you and building you in the way of righteousness you tap by see i tell you many of you are robbing yourself of glorious opportunities there are some of you who don't even know our birthdays I'm not asking you to go and buy a jet for me or do this. Many of you don't know. And you are laughing. Let me tell you the truth. It's, it's lack of wisdom. You won't get blessed that way. 
many of you are here you see people who are laboring day and night you don't even care you just look at them our birthdays come and pass there are some of you who don't even know all you know is our phone number when you have trouble ah god you said we should call you you won't get blessed that way jakes jakes oh they are pursuing me you see but let me tell you something there there are ways if you honor the anointing that god has put many this is a key i won't deceive you i'm not looking for blessings from you but i must teach you because it's the truth hallelujah many of you do not ever see the need that's why many of you like koinonia because you ran away from your churches you felt they are killing us in this church i like koinonia you don't give money just come and sit down and go but let me tell you something if we don't give you the balance and provoke you you will remain poor and if you remain poor we are not successful you will be frustrated you'll be angry hallelujah there are men and women of god in my life that i honor consistently till death consistently without fail no matter what happens i rather not have food to eat because i understand the place their place in my life and the benefits and the blessings and i've enjoyed the things that they carry and i've tapped into certain graces and wisdom hallelujah we have just one prayer point tonight you're going to pray for what i call the giving grace this prayer will break greed from the life of somebody forever and prepare you on a pedestrian hallelujah and will not end this meeting i want to give you an opportunity everybody package an offering i can't teach on prosperity without you raising this i don't i'm please pack it if you don't have help your neighbor it's not about money i want you to connect into spiritual principles i beg you if you have and your neighbor does not have help him if you don't have make contact with somebody this is not about money bring out a sacrificial seed we are going to pray I prayed and I cried this afternoon like a baby I said Lord Jesus said all the people you have given me none has been lost except the son of perdition that the scripture may be fulfilled bring out an offering some of you will need to make some sacrifices that will help you balance view I made sacrifices that changed my life. I'm still making sacrifices that will change my life forever. I am happy about the word of God and the laws of God. Please rise up on your feet. We're out of time. Outside, rise up on your feet. The Lord is in this place. We're out of time. I want you to pray for one minute. I spoke of obedience. I spoke of tithing. You will never be able to tithe consistently until there is grace for you. You can, see, let me tell you, it's humanly impossible to give, especially when you are in need. But in the house of God, giving for the work of the kingdom, giving, you will change your life and story. For you cannot do anything against the truth. Friends, if you have been looking for the key out of poverty, into a life of prosperity this is it i gave you tonight lift your voice and say lord the giving grace make sure you are praying open your mouth and pray break your pride tonight and pray say lord help me you have taught me your ways oh god Giving grace, giving grace, giving grace, grace to be faithful in tithing, grace to be faithful in tithing. Say, Lord, I make a vow, no matter what it will cost me, I become an ardent tither, an ardent tither. God cannot be mocked. Forget about the temporary suffering. Forget about the temporary inconveniences. Except there is no day and night. God can be trusted.
grace to be a tither grace to be a giver say Lord I break greed from my life I break the chains of greed I break the chains of selfishness I break the chains of selfishness forever oh God I stop thinking about myself I think about how many will be blessed from my life I think about the welfare of others above myself how I can be a blessing a channel of blessing to others to your house pray say Lord I'm delivered tonight from that self-centered spirit I me and myself I break free from that self-centered spirit I move from the realm of welfare and survival into the realm of true prosperity Lord that many will say they are blessed that many will say they went to school because of me many families will say their stories were changed because of me my pride is not just in my well-being alone my pride is in the testimony of changed lives lift your voice and pray the grace to give an ardent giver the grace to give I rebuke greed I rebuke self-centeredness pray for grace to obey the giving grace grace to obey grace to obey finally pray say Lord help me to recognize favor when it comes help me to recognize wisdom give me divine ideas insights innovation bless the works of my hands with passion give me the relevant information bless me oh God with the spirit of excellence the spirit of excellence go ahead and pray say Lord let me be that savior that will come out of my lineage that savior out of my family that savior I pay the price pray for grace to pay the price it will cost you let me tell you the truth it will cost you it will cost you mockery it will cost you envy it will cost you temporal inconvenience but if the clouds be full of rain as surely as the God of Israel lives as surely as the God of Israel lives you will command fearful results pray grace in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Lift up the seed that you have held. Please, if you don't have any seed, hold somebody. Connect. Please lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray for you. I prayed a prayer and I told God, I cried my life out this afternoon. I said, Lord, change the story of people. Make them believe this word and not just be emotional about it. Has no respect for age. Has no respect for geography. I don't care what level you are in. I tell you, if you practice this consistently, you will rise to the top and the nations will see you. God cannot lie. Lift your hands. Father, these seeds are a representation of kingdom-minded citizens who understand the correct blueprint for your prosperity package my god and my king there are families here that are struggling my god and my king there are people who have inherited all kinds of financial causes lord there are families here that are divorced and is on account of finances lord there are many people here who have been crying and saying lord where is the key my god i pray I give your seed a voice in the name of Jesus. 
I command it to speak in the spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says that God had respect for the offerings of Abel. I pray that this seed you are lifting. For some of you, you are not lifting it out of your convenience. But I pray that for the rest of your life, you will make reference to this night. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray the giving grace. Many of you want to do it, but there is no grace. The giving grace. The tithing grace. I release it upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that that spirit of greed, self-centeredness, let it be broken from your life forever. That your pride will be the testimony of others who have been blessed on account of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that as you begin to practice these kingdom principles, my God and my King, let favor come upon your people. Let wisdom come upon your people. Give them divine ideas, divine insight, concepts, innovations, in the name of Jesus. And I pray that God will bless the works of your hands. That God will bless the works of your hands with passion. God will grant you access to the relevant information you need. And that God will grant you the spirit of excellence. To lead in whatever field of endeavor. For those who are students, may God cause you to lead. Extraordinary performance. By the spirit of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Cast your offering quickly. I'm just praying tongues for one minute. Quickly. Ushers, let's hurry up. Please, we're out of time. Just pray in tongues for one minute. Kapara shi kapronda si bragere baladaba. Zende krete kete bele de bokoto frakata baladaba. I believe someone's life has changed tonight. Grant take up baladaba kari adaba. Lord, I give you thanks. Yes. For some of you, certain keys have been given unto you. In the Lord, do we make our boast all day long? There is a revelation that gives you audacity. Look beyond what is happening in your family. Look beyond your present situation. He said, if you know the truth, happy are you if you do them. If you know the truth, happy are you if you do them. And thou shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Just pray tongues quickly. Just thank him. Say, Lord, thank you. What an honor to hear this truth now. Yes, God cannot lie. Trust what you have heard this night. I tell you, celebrate it. It is truth. It brought men from obscurity to a place of prominence. It brought men. It brought men from obscurity. It brought men from weakness. It gave them a voice in the seat of the great. Thank him. Because once and for all, you are in a journey out of poverty forever. Out of poverty forever. Out of poverty. Not by impartation, by obedience. Say, Lord, I can now concentrate on my assignment. I can now concentrate on saving my generation. Go ahead and pray forever forever prophesy say i'm on my way out of poverty it may take a while but i will not give up i know the secrets i found it i found it i found it i found it i will abide in it i found it i found it i will die believing it i found the keys i found the keys out of poverty I found the keys forever I found the keys I found the keys I found the keys I want you to enter your spirit you have found the keys tonight I tell you the truth and I lie not you have found the truth it may take a while to manifest but as surely as the heavens are above the earth your laughter is on the way
for as many who believe in this truth tonight I tell you you have found your way out it may not look like it there will be temporary tears I won't deceive you but I tell you you have found your way be diligent don't stop now after doing all of this you can now begin to speak like Pastor Chris will say keep saying it only when your obedience is complete now Paul plans Apollo waters and my God my God the sufficient one will bring the increase this ministry will never be poor forever we have found a secret no no it's the truth I tell you this is what intoxicates me sometimes when I shout is on the strength of this revelation I'll never be poor forever no no never finance will never limit the work of God in my life that's why I'm paying the price now so that when he gives me the command go to the nations we will go on in that pay the price now listen don't envy anybody who has a result sit down and create your own history stop envying suits and and chips drop those things it's children that think about those things are you listening to me you may drink gari but practice the word one thousand naira give your tight people will say you are an idiot you don't have common sense hold on they laughed at sarah they laughed at sarah they laughed at abraham but he counted god faithful hallelujah see the bible says they i feel like jumping up the bible says they are alive to those who find them you see why some people jump over the word of god it's not just they are not pretending they have seen beyond the now lord we thank you yes i'm happy now you can finish 2012 i tell you now you can finish 2012 We have one more service next week we're not going to be doing any teaching next week we're just going to celebrate the faithfulness of God next week I'd like you to come we will rejoice we will celebrate him worship him get set we will enjoy do our Christmas here and give him thanks we'll continue this series in 2013 if you won't be there I know I'll be there I know. hallelujah Let's listen to the following announcements quickly. If you're worshiping with us for the first time. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share it to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain